we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Let's continue with... Seems good. Oh my god. There, there it is. Okay. Let's continue with oxygen not included, shall we? Uh, and I've been messing around a bit in sandbox mode. Okay, I've been messing around a lot in sandbox mode. Uh, and I've pretty much got the solar panel thing uh, figured out. I, I'm, I'm sure there's improvements we can make. In fact, uh, here's a draft of version 2 over here. Although there is one little change I need to make to it. Uh, that's why I left this broken right here to illustrate it. Um, so as it turns out, uh, this setup is 99 point some number of 9% uh, some number of 9's percent reliable in running itself and protecting itself. Uh, however, leave it running for several hours and come back and you may find one of the robo miners is somehow entombed in regolith or in this case uh somehow a couple of tiles got through the glass uh i think the dupes do have access to this area so they would have repaired it i made these uh glass tile these window tiles out of diamond so they're pretty tough they don't break straight away if uh if a media hits them So what I'm guessing happened here is uh, occasionally you get a thick enough chunk of regolith that spawns on impact from a media. Somehow it got through to the glass and uh, if it's thick enough some of it will spawn on the opposite side of the glass. I, get, I don't think that should ever happen. Um, I can only speculate. Um, so maybe it would be worth considering double thick glass here, or maybe that is just enough of an anomaly that we should just ignore it. After all, it's just going to cost like 200 glass to replace this. Looks like I missed one stream of Oni. Uh, we're in the sandbox save. Uh, we haven't, we haven't done this in our save. RPHL streams. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, so... I don't know if I should even build around this. Uh, because it happened, like, literally once in several hours of testing. Uh, maybe it was something like... The timing of the doors opening and closing, if there were a couple of media showers back to back. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, but I, I, I do see medias coming in at a slight angle, so I suppose we could definitely get the robo miners entombed some of the time. And they can't quite cover each other here. So I think it's reasonable to say that uh, instead of trying to put one robo miner able to cover the entire solar panel, and arguably we only need a, a robo miner every other solar panel with this design, um, uh, it's probably better to have have them one more tile out, uh, and that way they should be protected from meteors. I hope. Like, even the very rare ones that would have squeezed by. Um, but that said, there should be no medias getting this far in the first place. Uh, maybe there's a mistake in how we've got the bunker doors set up. Maybe occasionally they close too, slow uh, too slowly or something. 
Um, I've got them set to stay closed if there's no, if we're low on battery charge here, and we're running this on its own power network. So it's not like it could have opened up again. Yeah, I, I, I wish we could see like an instant replay of how something got damaged. Because I really don't, uh, I really can't quite make sense of this. But putting that aside, maybe it happened because of fast speed and game skipped a few frames? Maybe? I don't know if the game skips frames if we do this. Um... Regardless, uh, I think it's rare enough for us not to play around. Um, because we get a constant supply of iron from the meteors. Uh, glass is just sand, which uh, I guess we don't get glass from regolith, do we? I'm pretty sure it has to be sand specifically. Uh, yeah, it has to be sand. Is there something that... I don't think regolith can be turned into sand or anything, can it? At least not directly. I think if you make it hot enough, uh, and then let it cool again, it'll go to magma, and then magma will go back to igneous rock, which we could crush into sand. I'm not sure how we're supposed to uh, get regolith to 1400 degrees. Um, I haven't got the slightest idea of uh, just yet of how we would do that. I did accidentally learn one thing uh, that I didn't mean to looking online. I was trying to just look up and double check at what temperature do steam turbines not work. Uh, and I found uh, found a very clever application of radiant pipes whereby the steam turbines self-cool. These are not good if you want the steam time, uh, steam turbines to run at maximum efficiency because, uh, apparently if the steam gets too hot, they won't be able to keep themselves below 100 degrees. Um, but Assuming that we're taking in steam that's not too hot, uh, the water comes out, of course, at less than 100 degrees. And uh, if you think about it, the reason the steam turbine doesn't work above that temperature is it's kind of hard to output water as water if we're hotter than uh, steam. It is confirmed fast speed can ruin automation setup sensitive to it. Interesting. I guess maybe that's it. We could always do like double thick bunker doors or something. It really shouldn't be necessary, but maybe that's all it would take. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, I, I suspect if you're heating up the uh, steam turbine slowly enough, it'd be fine to have oxygen in here to, to use the radiant pipe to transfer heat. Uh, but hydrogen is like, it's like oil in terms of the, the best readily available coolant as far as gases go. Or best readily available heat exchanger, let's put it that way. Um, if you're able to make steam turbines, you can certainly get some hydrogen into the room. Uh, so yeah, that just outputs in a pattern that covers the steam turbine in radiant pipe, uh, keeps it under 100 degrees, and we don't actually need any active cooling. Speaking of not needing active cooling, depending on where you draw the line for that definition, uh, we aren't using any thermal aqua tuners, or as you can see here, I was going to experiment with uh, thermoregulators. 
as well. Um, they accomplish the same thing, except thermoregulator uses a lot less power and won't cool things as quickly. Um, also, it won't work if it's got if it's covered in water. So, until this flashes to steam, we want it. Uh, we need it to be elevated over the water. Um, but yeah, this actually doesn't need any aqua tuna or um, thermoregulator or anything like this because the stuff that we're cooling is significantly above 100 degrees. So we just run our oil as coolant uh, through what we want to cool, bring it back to the steam room with radiant pipe, and we don't even need a pump or anything because fluids like to go around in circles like this. Uh, if we have a liquid reservoir, the liquid wants to go to the uh, building intake, and then of course it outputs whenever it can. Um, so it'll just go around in circles forever without us putting any power into it or anything. Uh, the same goes for uh, gas pipes. Um, literally all we've got here to make this go round in circles is a single gas bridge. And as you can see, uh, it wasn't this empty before when I first set it up, but we've sometimes deleted things to fix or change something. Uh, but it actually takes very little uh, it, this is oxygen, which is not the best at transferring heat, and most of the pipe is empty, but this is still way more than enough to keep the batteries, uh, steel batteries anyway, uh, to keep them cool enough not to overheat. This setup requires a lot of refined metal. Yeah, well, we're in sandbox mode where, um, we're playing around and seeing what works. We definitely don't need three batteries per solar panel. Uh, and we definitely don't need one steam turbine per solar panel either. Um, I don't know the exact ratio, but uh, I deliberately set things up here so we'd be generating even a little bit more heat than we would necessarily need to, uh, to be sure that this can do its job. Uh, I did add the auto sweepers relatively recently. Um, it's really not necessary. Uh, one could argue. Uh, and the auto sweepers have to work for a long time. Uh, the, the, the auto sweepers have to work relatively a lot to clear all the regolith. Actually, maybe it's only because I put them in after there was a lot of regolith here. Um, but they're definitely optional. We could just have the dupes come up here to pick up iron and gold amalgam and regolith if we so desire. Oh, and uh, another little detail. Uh, the reason I had these manual airlocks here is at first I thought maybe I would, you know, let gas onto the robo miners this way in order to cool them. But, uh,. There's a little advantage that fluid has, uh, sorry, not fluid, uh, liquid has over gas when we're exposed to vacuum. And that is, if we do have a drywall, uh, it doesn't disappear. So we can just have, uh, we can just have all of this sitting in a little bit of oil and that will allow the radiant pipe to cool the robo miners. Robo jumper, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You're probably bottlenecked by the single rail. It can only do twenty kilograms a second. Yeah, and I only put in the uh, the sweepers after there was tons and tons of regolith here already. Oni, indeed, damsel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so... Oh, and the solar panels. Um, surely enough, even if you put them on top of, like, 
I, I thought these were metal tiles. Uh, I think I did put them on top of metal tiles earlier. Uh, even if you put them on top of metal tiles or right next to this glass that's heating up, uh, they absolutely will not get any heat transferred to them uh, if they are in a vacuum. Um, and not immersed in fluid like this, obviously. Uh, ran this for hour after hour, testing it, and... Oh, this one gained some temperature somehow. Uh, it probably ended up with regolith on top of it or something. Like the other one, except that one was broken. Uh, weirdly enough, you can... You can place solar panels just up in the air and they don't care. I think it's because these tiles are actually, like, something you can stand on? Question mark? Uh, I kind of want to find out. Let's get a dupe up here. And, yeah, it looks like the... Uh, there's like seven tiles, that seven blocks that the dupes can actually stand on with the solar panels. Solar panels are walkable. Does that mean I could actually put them here, like one tile down? Uh, do, do solar panels act as... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Will they keep gas in, for example? Or liquid? I imagine the answer is yes. Let's put in some gas that we can easily see. Uh, how about hydrogen? Whoa, liquid hydrogen? Not what I had in mind. Uh, hydrogen... Gas. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's not going anywhere. So, I would have thought heat would transfer from, like, the bunker tile or the glass to the solar panel here. Uh, and my initial intuition was solar panels receiving energy from the sun would gain heat. I'm sure that's probably what happens IRL. But... No, if you leave this running indefinitely, um, with the solar panels sitting in vacuum, uh, apart from these two that, I don't know how they gained 1.3 degrees, the fact that they both gained exactly 1.3 makes me a little more suspicious of it. Uh, I think it only happened after I started messing with the, uh... Whatchamacallit. Uh, the conveyor belts. What the... Oh, here it is. When we were moving all of the hot regolith over to the right, maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, sure. Kind of funny that they can be covered up, too. Uh, covered up? The solar panels? Game does betray your expectation more often than I'd like, indeed. You can spawn a dupe. Oh, it's okay, they'll be here soon. And yeah, there they go, standing on the solar panel. Um, give me a little bit more oil. Crude oil. And then, that's a bit much. Whatever. Looks kind of weird over here. Oh, uh, but yeah, other than these, like, rare anomalies, like regolith somehow getting here, or here... And I don't know where this 1.3 degrees came from. Uh, I tested this for hours and hours, and the solar panels were still exactly 20 degrees. Um, so that might be all that's needed there. Uh, especially since our coolant loop is only keeping things at 
like 100 degrees minimum. Or less, more than that even, because the steam turbines will only kick in when the steam gets to 125. Um, so yeah, we've got the... Oh, I didn't even break it. Uh, we've got the battery charge, if it's below 50%, until it's full again, or the detected meteor shower incoming, uh, a not gate from those two, so either of those conditions uh, inverted, uh, will shut all of the bunker doors. We don't have a fancy timer system for this one because we're not putting a uh, Robo Miner hanging from the bunker doors. Um, so it, so the circuitry is nice and simple here. Um, and I don't know what else there is to say about it, actually. I think that covers just about everything. There's stuff built above them. Oh yeah, but we've got glass here, so if we look at the Lux display... Where is it? Temperature, materials, light overlay. Here we go. And it's morning. Perfect timing. Oh, I didn't think to get rid of this. There we go. Uh... Oh, you mean this in the middle? Yeah, I don't know if it has to be the middle specifically, but uh, I, f I found that if we put one tile in the middle up here, we still get 100% uh, out of our solar panels. Um, I don't know if it's number of tiles or if it has to be the middle. That's really cool, not how I imagined they would work, yeah. I thought it was weird that the bunker tiles don't reach as far as one unit of solar panels. Um, it does appear to be that tile specifically. It has to be... why is this one not working as much? Or we're just... the sun is still coming up. Oh, no, this one's... this one's doing 100%. Yeah, you can have exactly one tile. No? Are we all are we still doing maximum now? That's weird. I don't know exactly exactly how this works. Uh, but I had to put three tiles in the way to get less than a hundred percent out of this. Uh, so it looks like we've got some meteors incoming. And the meteors are done already. And then the regolith drops down. Uh, it's going to still be blocking some of this solar panel. And then the robo miners do their thing. Robo miners get hot. Uh, but then the... Uh, we've got Radiant Pipe. We could put the Radiant Pipe up here as well, but this is good enough. Um, hot Regolith drops onto this. Uh, Robo Miners do their thing. Heat is generated. But uh, we've got the Crude Oil touching the Robo Miners, transferring heat between this stuff. And we don't need the Crude Oil to transfer the heat from the regolith to the glass, whether we like it or not. Um, but we're just running our coolant through there. Solar panels use the total light flux to calculate power, capped at 380. Interesting. Um, I've seen some pretty wild differences in how much the steam turbines were running to keep it cool. Uh... I mean, I could, I could use the heat gun and add some heat up here, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't add that much heat. No, oh, that seems okay. Uh, 
Uh, so we're at like 200 degrees, 189, 170 over here, 200. Uh, as you can see, once it reaches like 125, some of the steam turbines start to kick in. Uh, I suspect we need f way fewer steam turbines than this. Uh, because if we were transferring more heat down here, uh, the steam temperature would jump up faster. Which would just, up to a point, it would just mean that we would get more efficiency out of our steam turbine. But then again, maybe it would... Maybe it would heat the steam turbine too fast to keep it working with uh, self-cooling. But I think, I mean, considering this, with the heat that we just added, the steam is still like 126, 127 degrees almost on this side. Uh, I think it would be very difficult to add heat to this fast enough for that problem to arise. So we probably only need like one steam turbine per four or per eight solar panels or something. But considering the number of bunker doors uh, that we're building, those are 500 steel each, uh, bunker tiles, another 100 steel, and so on. Uh, I think like, well... Now that I look at it, the steam turbine is actually 800 steel. We could make it out of lead, but if we're building it up here, um, it's probably kind of nasty how hot it is already. I guess you could cool this room first. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult. We've got some uh, vacuum area over here so that heat isn't transferred through the uh, joint plates. And... Yeah, I think the only real... Apart from reducing the battery count, using bigger transformers so we're not making as much heat because they produce the same amount of heat as the smaller transformers. Um, and just bringing the robo miners out further. I don't know if this would actually stop that very rare... It, it only happened once, actually. Uh, the instance where somehow we ended up with the regolith here. Um, now that I look at it, I don't know if that would actually stop it, because my assumption was that somehow this door was open and media crashed down like this. But maybe it was actually some weird thing where like the regolith teleported down or something. Uh, in which case we'd just be wasting a bit more resources and space by doing this. In any case, it's almost zero maintenance. Uh, if we... Uh, if we do it something like this... Oops. Like so. Uh, is it shipping? Shipping. I think we should have one robo miner per solar panel, though. Uh, two robo miners per solar panel, though. Um, I don't know, this should be... No, 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 no. If we're going to go that far... We should probably just make it a bit more horizontally compact. The more solar panels we can fit on the map, the better, right? Oops. 
which means we could theoretically get away with run one Robo Miner between two solar panels. Sometimes we get more regolith than other times, though. Um, and they'll have to dig out more, and the solar panels will be down for longer uh, after the doors open. But we could at least like start with just one Robo Miner per solar panel, and just leave it easily upgradable. Yeah, I think I, I think I do like that. Steam Turbine will stop operating at a greater than 100C, so you have a lot of other problems before the lead steam turbine will melt. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, also, the steam turbines and the batteries and things really don't need to be up here. Um, I just sort of built it up here because I wanted to be able to see the whole system all at once, for one thing. And also to see if we could. Because ultimately, like late game, it would be nice to sort of just start covering the top of the map with this. Um, yeah. One thing I did go looking for deliberately, uh, because I think I've sort of seen enough to quote-unquote spoil it, uh, is uh, also partly because uh, an update broke... Uh, the airlock door mod. So I thought I was going to have to potentially either not stream only today or maybe even tomorrow start a different save because uh, we couldn't load our main save uh, without the airlock doors just turning into blocks of lead. Um, but if we do if we do want to make a like not waterlock, uh, like a mechanical style airlock. Uh, there is a way, it turns out checkpoints do what I wish we could set up doors to do with just an option. Um, unfortunately we have to have them two tiles away from the doors because if a dupe stands here waiting for this door, or waiting for whatever condition, uh, this door will open. So, but I did realize we could put, uh, we could put the Atmos suit checkpoint right here, and the dock here, and then the checkpoint over this way. And let's get a suit delivered. And I don't really care how much space it takes up on the right side. Or on the, like, gas side. Do we have some gas here? There we go. So basically we have... A mechanized airlock. It's completely unconditional. The door itself is. Uh, a mini gas pump, because we don't want to take up much space in here. I guess we could use a bigger one, or like a pair of mini gas pumps is apparently better uh, if we if we want this to ha to be higher throughput. But usually with rooms like this, um, I'm happy to have just it, it, it like the dupes don't have to come in and out very often, um, so it's fine if it takes a few seconds to empty to to make a vacuum here. Uh, so we have, if Atmo sensor below zero actually gives us green if vacuum, weirdly enough. Um, if there's a vacuum detected in this little room, then both checkpoints are enabled. And as soon as there's any gas in here, both checkpoints are set to stop the dupes from going through. Um, and it actually does, at least as far as I've tested it so far. What? Oh, we're waiting on the Atmo suit. Uh, so far as I've tested it so far, uh, it actually does 
prevent our gas from escaping. Oh, oh, you can use three doors set up with middle door automatically opening when others are closed. Middle door automatically opening when others are closed. But then the dupes won't be able to path through it. Um, because the problem... The, the way automation works with these doors, it's just... Red equals shut and locked, and green equals open. Uh, and unfortunately there's no options, as we might expect. Whereby we could set it so that a green signal enables or disables passage through the door. Alien Stalker Predator, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so this will just be open or both shut and locked, depending on the signal. Uh, you'd, you'd think there would be some options that we could set, like there are on sensors, but sadly this is it. We can't, like, programmatically change this behavior right here. Um, so that means we need checkpoints around the airlock in order to make this work. But, uh, this is not that bad, um, as far as making the kind of airlock that I imagined in the first place. Yeah, the, the kind of thing that you'd think would be, like, built into the game and would take up 3 by 2 tiles. You know, kind of like this, uh, this airlock door right here. Except that this doesn't give us a vacuum in the middle, and it will transfer heat. You also want to prevent gas leaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's not difficult to make a mostly okay airlock. Like, uh, literally just put a couple of manual airlocks next to each other. Um, but if we both want a vacuum here to prevent heat from transferring across, and want to keep all of the gas in here, I've put really high pressure chlorine in here for testing purposes, so if it has the slightest chance to get out, it is absolutely going to get out. Um, it'll explode to, like, take up this much area, pretty much. Uh, where's a dupe? Here we go. Could you please move over here? So once our dupe shows up, uh, gas will get into this room. Oh wait, I might have failed to think of something here. If I put the checkpoint this close, uh, he's gonna take a moment. No, it's fine. He's already inside on the other side of the checkpoint. So like, door is open, gas gets in. Is it gonna walk this far? I think he is. Well, let's see what happens. Oh! Okay, so apparently if the doors are powered, they're just fast enough to stop gas getting all the way through, I think. We got some chlorine here, but not on this side. That's what I was talking about when you wanted to do this with your steam room. High pressure is really dangerous, yeah. Uh, and also, with high pressure steam, it sort of stops the... Uh, uh, stops the liquid vents from being able to output. So... I used to fill a room completely with water before heating it up to steam. Uh, now I just do one third, like uh, like that. Uh, three tiles high so that we can have Atmo suit docks so that dupes can come in and out. Um, and also, if we ever want to use a... Uh, what is it called again? Thermal... 
a thermoregulator if we want to cool gas instead of liquid and pay a lot less power moment to moment to do it. Uh, there'll be room to do it this way. Without this thing getting flooded. Uh, but yeah, so now he's uh, Nicola. Nicola is in the gas room. We've got some chlorine stuck in here. And Nicola wants out, but checkpoint says no. So he's waiting just far enough away from the door that the door won't open. We're pumping chlorine back into the room. And once we end up with uh, zero pressure here, uh, the checkpoint will say you're allowed to leave. And he'll rush straight through this. Um, he's allowed to go out to the left. The checkpoint only works in one direction. Uh, he'll rush straight through this. Gas will get in here again, but uh, he'll be gone. The doors will be shut. And it will pump the gas back into this room. Oh, and it's taking a lot longer than we might expect. Because the chlorine is so high pressure. Uh, so there's actually quite a lot of it in here. Uh, let's see, pause it. Chlorine, 459 grams still in one tile. Two thousand, fifteen hundred, thirteen hundred grams on the bottom tile. Our little pump is doing its best. Um, but it's still nowhere near enough to like run out of uh atmosuit oxygen or anything like that. And now we're getting close. There we go. So that works. I'd be happier if we didn't need the gas filter as well. But what are you going to do? Or rather, if, if we had, like, miniaturization for the gas filter, or could put it behind walls. 2k pressure, that pump will be working overtime. Yeah, this is a, like, a very deliberately egregious example. Uh, for testing reasons. Although, in our game, I do have a ton of chlorine in the uh, water room. Since this is just by far the densest way to store it. But I think that's about everything for stuff I've been experimenting with in Sandbox. This is uh, not the final version, but you get the basic idea of what I want to build up in space next in our main game. Let's jump into it. Uh, I want to make sure I get the right save here, because I had this running for hours just to make sure it wouldn't crash or anything today. Uh, here we go. Actually, I think it's this one. You don't need gas filter though, can use gas pipe sensor and vent. Well, uh, it did get oxygen and chlorine in it at the same time somehow. So I think maybe, maybe no. Also there's no room for another sensor because we can't stick them behind the mini gas pump or anything. Why is there water here? What the... That's looking a bit weird. Okay. That was strange. 
Uh, but yeah, as after after doing some nice, neat designs in Sandbox, coming back to this save, uh, I feel the itch to restart creeping in a little bit. Part of that was because I thought I would have to restart. But yeah, it's all a little bit cramped. And some of it is very spaghetti. But what can you do? Here we've got... Um... Probably shouldn't be using these auto sweepers, to be honest. Uh, here we've got gas, waste gas, being used to uh, cool our robo miner. But everything is getting so hot in this room that it's not helping all that much. Also, CO2 is about as bad as it gets for transferring heat, I think. Uh, carbon dioxide gas. Let's see. Thermal conductivity, 0 0.015. Not that much specific heat capacity either. Um, it did cool the Robo Miner way faster than expected when I had a, a gas vent directly next to it. Um... Maybe we should just do that again. Because my idea here was we'd let the gas out here and it would cool the whole room before being sucked out. Uh, this tile back here doesn't have a drywall. Um, but it's not really working that way. I think we'll just... Also, we're running Radiant pipe through an area that's already kind of hot. Not as hot as this, though. As long as it's cooler than the temperature at which the Robo Miner will get damaged, it doesn't really matter. So why don't we try making this... Starting about here, uh, we'll make it insulated pipe. And then we'll output our gas right next to the Robo Miner. I see what it is. Gas sucks in temperature from bunker doors into the room. Uh, are the bunker doors getting cooler? Not really. If anything, I think they're gaining heat. Yeah, I think the auto sweepers are just getting that much hotter. Actually, before we go ahead and turn them off, why don't I try dumping gas onto the robo miners as well? Uh, where would be the best spot? Probably like here. Sorry, not the Robo Miners, the Auto Sweepers. So we're just going to try outputting our waste gas uh, as close to these three as possible. Which, when we did that with the Robo Miner only, was way more than enough to cool it. It actually cooled it shockingly fast. That was a huge temperature differential, but so is this, and this just isn't working half as well. Um, it also would help, I guess it doesn't really matter, I was going to say it would help if we were venting the gas, if the bunker doors were open, um, we'd be venting the gas a lot faster. As it is, we're gaining enough pressure that there's just more and more gas to exchange heat around the room. And we're holding onto the heat 
that the robo miners uh, that sorry that the auto sweepers are generating is this shut or something uh events building or supply errand if it's not unreachable what are our dupes doing something uh let's try prioritizing construction eight Um, also, the coolant that we're setting up, uh, I have what in some circumstances is probably a pretty good idea. Uh, I've got a liquid shutoff here that basically we do a short range loop if the coolant isn't below a certain temperature yet. So we only send it back up here once it's really cold. But Considering, you know, the Aquatuna-less build that we just looked at in the, um, in the sandbox, and how much heat we're going to get up here, uh, I really, really don't think this is necessary this time. So, I guess this is, this is the output side? This is a shutoff, so... Yeah, here we go. If the... If the fluid is above 15 degrees... Sorry, negative 15 degrees. If the coolant isn't cool enough, loop it back to the aqua tuners before sending it back up. I don't think that's a good idea for this build in particular. Uh, there may be some use cases where, um, where it is a good idea. Hello? Oh, I think we need that to be the opposite. So below absolute zero. So now our coolant will loop. Uh... If we're going to do it this way, though... Huh. We're using the same coolant to cool our steam turbines. This is like the opposite of the build that we were just looking at in, um... Uh... In the sandbox. It's totally dependent on power and cools things very aggressively. But we don't have that much power right now. Why don't we have that much power? We've got... Oh. No? We've got all of our natural gas generators doing their th thing? Why did they stop just now? For a second. We've got battery charge here. This is connected to the same... Oh, I haven't connected this yet. Uh, is there a reason not to? Just yet. We need more water in here. Uh, yeah. I th is that the last step? I mean, I can deconstruct this gas pump, but we can do that any time, really. Uh, I th think we... There's a bit of ice in here, but I don't think that's going to matter. I think we are ready to fill it with water. I, I remember leaving this disconnected at the end of the last stream because I wanted to make sure something. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. 
you know, since we've got room for a gas pump down here, maybe we should just make it a big gas pump. Whatever, it's fine. Alright, so we're going to have our watch down here. What temperature are we at? Uh, 37 degrees, what? Why is the crude oil so cold? It's coming back at... 128 by the time it gets here. How is this only 41? 129 degrees. Uh, this thing is only 24 degrees somehow. Oh, is it simply taking a long time to, to heat up the oil that's already in the reservoir because it's a lot of specific heat capacity? I think that might be it. 43 degrees inside. Where's that? 47 degrees here. And 130 here. Oh. Oh, is this thing itself is colder than the fluid? 52 degrees. Yes. Okay, then. Check the contents menu, indeed. It's getting scalded. Yeah, we still haven't cooled this area that much. Um, I think I should move this battery so that we can have a little vacuum here, so that we stop transferring heat through here. Or I could keep the battery where it is and just put a airlock here. But then the battery is gonna... We're still building this. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely have to move the battery. It, it should really be on this side somewhere. Yeah, I want it to be on this side of this transformer um, so that we can, like, check this battery in particular to see if there's power so that we don't open the bunker doors if we're not ready. But that said, I would like it to be... a bit more out of the way. Make it out of steel. Do you even need the battery there? It's just for information, um, mainly. If we're low on battery charge here, and if the space, and or if the space scanner detects meteors coming, uh, I want to close the bunker doors. Batteries have no limit to output power, it could overload your wires. Uh, only if I put enough consumers on this side. We're only using the small wires here because we can't put, like, Heavy watt conductive wire into the bunker tiles, for example. Alright. Um, let's decon this battery. And... Priority 9... This. Mm. 
get this out of the way so that we can have a airlock here that has a vacuum in the middle. What are we printing? Uh, salt water? Sure. What is next planet you want to try? Next planet? Oh, um, I don't really feel I've mastered this one. I, I, I think, I think I'd do at least one more restart on this planet, or planetoid, whatever it's called. Um, I don't know how this big order of digging got put here. But let's, let's say no to that. Uh, yeah, the, I, I still like feel like there's quite a lot more to learn and build on this one um, before I jump to another one. What was that? Gained a skill? I always forget just how long the dupes take to build things. Are we not going to decon this? Oh, we're also waiting for the temperature in here to drop. To a certain amount before we open the bunker doors. That might be a mistake. I don't know, when we do open the bunker doors we let a bunch of heat in with the regolith, so maybe not. I guess we could have more... We could maybe not have the drywall at all, to be honest. Except then the radiant liquid pipes here aren't doing anything. Yeah, we could make some more gaps in the drywall uh, to let gas out. I kind of wish we had a... I guess we could do it with a door. But if we could toggle drywall on and off, like open it up out the back. Based on pressure would be good. Where is telescope? Uh, I don't have one yet, actually. Is it under automation or stations? Telescope. Telescope. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. It's kind of big. So I'm guessing it'll mostly have the same needs as a solar panel, except it produces heat. And it has a low overheat temperature. Uh, field research must be exposed to space to function. Requires oxygen. Power. Not much power. Doesn't produce a whole lot of heat. So we just need to protect it from meteors and cool it slightly. And if we're protecting it from meteors, we need a Robo Miner and the whole shebang, just like with solar panels. The solar panel itself, uh, in and of itself, is really quite easy. It's the 50 things you have to build around it that's a bit more of a challenge. Why can't I build this here? What's in the way? 
we've got pipes and wires and conveyor rail. The conveyor rail already goes through our door here. Hey, are you not supposed to... Oh, I know what it is. It's the stupid drywall. Just a hobby? You'd think all this regolith cooling setup is for something that has purpose, like allowing telescope to work? I mean, it's our first one. It's it's an infinite iron mine, and a bit of gold amalgam, and infinite regolith. Is that not something? Lads, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Yeah, this is literally our first foray into space here. Uh, I just wanted to get space scanners that don't have the, uh, like, 0% scan quality. So your suits seem to be boiling. Oh no. That's only 130 degrees? What? Oh, that's made of iron. Well, there's your problem. Uh, I could put the suits down here, but then changing this around. Let's just be lazy and make it out of steel. We've got 4K steel. It's fine. Oh no. Oh no, Cavern, no. That's just because just because the Atmo suit checkpoint is busted doesn't mean you can ignore it and go into this hellscape without an Atmo suit. Could you please stop panting and go 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 to the cold place before you die? Ah, <sighs> and he's incapacitated. Okay. Okay. Well, someone will be by to pick him up shortly, I'm sure. Uh, by shortly, apparently I mean never, because everyone's in the cots. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um. Uh. Can we, like, pick Sloda out of this? Yes, we can. Poor Kevin, indeed. Uh. Johnsku, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, someone's got him. It's. Fine. Don't worry about it, it's okay. Alpha B, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we need to replace this with steel. Let's just double check everything here is steel. It should be. That's iron. What temperature are we at here? One for oh wait, this doesn't have an overheat temperature, I think. Yeah, that one's fine. This one's steel. And this is also steel, I believe. This is lead? Oh, that just ha that just has a melting temperature, not overheat. He suffers so much in this column. No, it's not a torture can. We're doing our best, okay. Look, he's already back to 7% health. He's he's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I, I guess we're going to have to max prior this. 
Otherwise we're gonna have to wait who knows how long before we get to give orders again. So that we can fire and forget here. At least they're not spending that long in the scalding hot place. I was gonna say, why is shipping pulsing at me? All right, let's go stations, atmos suit checkpoint, steel, and some docks, cryo, nine for this, eight for these. And we need our automation wire. Uh, to touch this one. And I don't particularly care when that happens. Okay. How's our cooling going here? Oh, we haven't connected it yet because we're still putting in water. What temperature is this water? 10 degrees, but the ice is still not melting? I guess. How much water do we have down here? Not enough. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh... We are pumping a little water in from here. What about that other steam bed? Did we not get that going? Oh, we really, really, really did. Oh. Timing. There it is. There's our water. How scalded are we? Not that scalded yet? By the way, I finally tried out jetpack suits. Pretty good, especially for space work, and did not notice any aforementioned FPS issues whatsoever. Nice. Um, I heard there's some new stuff in the latest patch, but I didn't have a time, I uh, have a chance really to look at it. I wonder what there is that's been added, or f updated, or fixed, or whatever. All right. Does this Atmos suit dock work if these two aren't built yet? Clearance always permitted. Suited duplicates may pass even if there is no room to store their suits. When all available docks are full, duplicates will unequip their suits and drop them on the floor. Huh. Okay. There's not like a setting here or anything. Clearance vacancy. Oh, here we go. Suited duplicates may only pass if there's an available dock to store their suit. Clearance, vacancy only. Okay. Does that mean if they were on the other side they'd be stuck if somehow the dock was full? By the way, I finally... Oh, I read that already. Er Erisia Gaming? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why is it always Kevin who's trying to get himself killed? <laughs> um, probably because Builder and Digger, I think. Uh, and maybe Supplier. Let's see. Kevin. Yeah, we've got carrying, plumbing, digging, construction. Kevin is very useful. What are we printing? Hatchling egg? Yes, please. Oh. 
Wow, I thought we needed more hatchlings. Um, how many do we have right now? We have eight, including the eggs. I think they're happy up to five. Alright, uh, let's scramble some eggs. Oops. And can we get rid of that? I think we're done with that little test right there. Find the oldest one. 43, 18, 8. Hey ho, baby time. Hey ho, baby time? Evil Plur, thank you very much for the nine months. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. And good to see you again. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, um, let's get rid of the oldest. Uh, I think, so we're going to get rid of the egg as well. That drops us down to seven critters. I think we need to get rid of two more. Hello everyone. Hello Evil Plot. Thanks for stopping by. Um, this is taking a surprisingly long time to get built. I think it's at least supplied now. Oh, uh, why is there water here? Oh, because this ice melted, probably? Oh, it's fine. It'll drop through the base. Not that worried about that. Uh oh, reservoir is made of iron. And it's probably too hot now. Uh, let's see. The reservoir itself says it's 22.6 degrees. But I get the feeling that's not really how that works. Uh, fortunately... Oh wow, what? What? Liquid shut off. Overheat temperature is only 55. Alright, let's get rid of it. I didn't want to use it anymore anyway. Uh, fortunately, when we deconstruct a liquid reservoir, it's just... Uh, the fluid is just put there as a bottle, or bottles. So we can just replace this once again with steel. Alright, so by the time the dupes put the suits here, there should be enough oxygen. And once we get the airlock with the vacuum done here, we should stop bleeding heat from this place. Uh, I might want the output pipe from up here to be not radiant, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. So, back here. Fantastic. Let's make a steel liquid reservoir. Just throw steel at every problem. Or at least every problem to do with things getting too hot. Speaking of too hot. Uh, it's actually still under 200 degrees in most corners of this area. So that's fine. I 
do kind of want that oil looping again. We're getting close to enough water for our steam turbines, or maybe we've already got enough, especially when we consider the ice. You know what? I can pump more water in here whenever I want, so why don't we just disconnect that for now? And let our liquid reservoir fill up. Let's see if the steam works. Oh, I need to prior these as well. Otherwise it'll never get done, even though it's a single quick task. This game is too smart for me. It's got a bit of a learning cliff, definitely. Zura, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are our steam turbines? Oh, automation grid. Yeah, these ones will actually wait till the steam reaches a certain temperature. Okay. Errands. Supplying. Here we go. Good job, Veldak. And now people are only going to get a bit scolded when they go through here. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, how close are we to finishing this event? Not as close as I would like. We have got them set to aggressively get themselves healed. So little things like this, it should be fine. They still haven't deconned this bit though, which is pretty important actually. Since we want the uh, vacuum here so that heat doesn't get transferred from here to here. Does the airlock... I might have to move an automation wire or two. Overheat temperature doesn't actually matter with these... Uh, unless it literally melts. What kind of man doesn't include oxygen? Uh, this kind. Cyber Exile. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we can get our airlock here now. It'll be a good day when the transit tube isn't so hot that people are getting scalded by it. Bad design? No kidding, this is my first one. Oxygenless planet? Wait, what? Alright, so we have our... This is exposed to space, right? Yeah. We have our gas disappearing out here. Um, I'll get rid of the high pressure vent here as soon as one of these are connected. And this will just be a vacuum at all times. As usual, 
something you'd think would take five minutes is taking several days to build. Did we get our automation wire connected? Almost. Uh, we do not need this connected, though. Media's incoming. Fantastic. And you didn't get rid of that automation wire yet, did you? Automation wire. Uh, hello? I don't think there is automation wire here, so why is this set to... Oh, it's like still on lock from the automation wire, but I can just manually change it. Okay. And can can you prioritize this one? No? Gonna do everything else first, really? I'm pretty sure this is already supplied. My trim could could you Yep, get that done please? No? Is someone else doing it? Evil pla. Uh, I guess that works. Alright. Now we can finally get rid of this high pressure gas pump, uh, gas vent right here. Priority 9 to deconstruct. There we go. Alright, so now our waste gas comes out right next to the devices that we want it to cool. Uh, everything else in this room doesn't matter unless it literally melts. We've got... We will have insulated pipe up this side when the coolant comes back hot and maybe this should be insulated it's probably fine we'll see uh we should be getting oh we've got a lot of vacuum in here still Uh, we want Radiant Pipe at this point, right? I think so. Yeah, we want the input to be Radiant. But if it goes through the Aqua Tuners, we want to keep the cooled temperature in the pipes. Then again, the uh, the aqua tuners themselves will pump, uh, will transfer a lot of heat. But yeah, I should have. Uh, well, I didn't know at the time when I designed this. I could have done just a loop of radiant pipe here, no aqua tuners, because what we're cooling is well over a hundred degrees. 
so it will flash it to Steam without the help of the Aquatunas. I guess it's not too late to change it. But... On the other hand, we could cool this way more aggressively. I kind of want to try it and see what happens. We could do a bit of both, but like, the pipe spaghetti is going to be difficult after designing it like this and making it repeatable. Okay. What's the temperature here? 120 degrees. Ouch. Can we not get this aqua tuna to run? Oh, it probably would help if I gave it some power. Yeah, I think we're ready. Alright, so... If both of them run, which they are, it the input fluid should be uh, 28 degrees higher, approximately, which it is. Fantastic. I think it's more about trial and error. This game has an insane learning curve. It definitely does. Um... Something like Factorio, you do end up building some very complex systems, but to get things working, you just build things piece by piece, right? But for something like getting your first steam turbine to work, um, there's just so many things that you have to figure out simultaneously. like. Uh, many things that you have to figure out to get one build working. Um, so it's a bit more intimidating. Um, but yeah, that should be our... We're basically finished with this, but that's our coolant loop. Uh, the crude oil will go through here with radiant pipe. Um, exchange heat with this, and this, and this, and this. Uh, insulated pipe over here. Maybe I should have insulated pipe all the way back to this thing. Probably yes. Uh, don't really need that anymore. That little bit of radiant pipe. And I'm thinking all of this should be insulated, actually. So when it's coming back hot, it's insulated on the side where we want to keep things cool. Until it gets to here, that's going to be radiant. And then after it runs through the aqua tuners, it's going to be insulated. Um... We do need a sensor. Well, theoretically, we'll need a sensor eventually. Uh, to turn the aqua tuners off when the input fluid is cool enough. But we're not in danger of that happening just yet. Liquid pipe thermo sensor. I'm going to put it here and here. And we're going to... Uh, extend our pipe just there, just so that there's room for the sensor. There's so many fun ways your base can become destroyed, indeed. One of the more, one of my more amusing ones was I ran out of dirt. That happened to me as well. Uh, but we managed to pivot away from it because I had so many farms, I had so many calories stored. Mr. Cup Holder, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
we can get Paku. We've we've got like one, um, because I've I barely experimented with that. Oh. Uh, I don't have a way to move them into. We're just gonna eat them if I do that. We'll take the gold amalgam. Uh, but yeah, Paku take in various seeds and spit out polluted dirt, which we can clean to make regular dirt. That is their function. Uh, Bristle Blossom doesn't need any dirt at all. It's basically electricity and water, uh, its inputs as far as we're concerned. It needs light, it needs uh, water, it needs atmosphere, pressure, nothing too unusual there. I was looking at Bristle Blossoms as something we could feed the Glossy Dracos, um, but the mealwood is faster. Unless I misread something. Uh, 24 cycles for Bristle Blossom. But we get more, like... I think we get more calories? Per plant? But the way it describes how much the glossy Dracos eat, it just says one unit per cycle. So I'm not entirely sure what that actually means. Uh... But we calculated that, uh, I think it was five. This is probably one extra plant. Uh, five mealwood trees are exactly enough for the maximum number of dracos in a stable before they get upset because they're crowded. I think if we replace it with bristle blossom, uh, they won't get enough food. I was looking at the Draco diet and said, oh, a uh, pinch of pepper plant, that grows in hydrogen, right? I think. Air pressure, phosphorite, polluted water temperature. It can grow in hydrogen, I think. Uh, but unfortunately, the glossy Draco doesn't actually eat that. The only plants the glossy Draco eats... Uh, have to be in oxygen, so we can't have the entire room as hydrogen, unfortunately. What's this made out of? Iron ore. Damage overheating. Wait, what? Iron ore. Oh, I was thinking iron ore had some plus overheat temperature. It's iron, refined iron, is probably what I was thinking of. Well, this is dormant right now. Um, let's replace this with gold amalgam. How's our temperature looking? 106. 107. That is a significant drop here already. As much as the display just shows everything is red. There's no power here? Uh oh. Steam turbine below. Steam temp below 125. Not enough steam. Okay. This is fine. And when you try to find out, in-game wiki says no data, right? There's times you can only blame the game itself for not explaining how things work, like all this rocket jazz and fuel calculations. Yeah. Yeah, especially, like, when you have a database like this, but then some of the things you search for literally just says no data, uh, and the game's been out for years... Um, not too impressed by that. Oh, I didn't set the rest of this up yet. Uh, let's do some lead, automation wire, 
and we're gonna say we're just trying to make sure the oil doesn't get so cold that it would freeze right and we need to have a few degrees of slack because we've had like temperature troubles if we go too low even though they should even though it should be fine down here before so oil I believe goes to negative 40 uh crude oil liquid solid is negative 40. so we're gonna say uh let's see this thing cools it by 15, uh, 14 degrees let's add like 18 at least let's add 20. negative 20 on this one And uh, negative six on this one. Temperature has to be above negative six. Temperature has to be above negative 20. Uh, otherwise, the thermal aquatuners will not kick in. Uh, that way, we know we won't eventually freeze the oil, even though that would be rather difficult to do. Oh, it doesn't calculate delta V? That sounds a bit nasty. Uh, do we want radiant pipe going up this way? I think we probably... Uh, I, I don't think it matters too much here. It's not possible to freeze the steam turbine, right? I doubt it. Kinda hot in here anyway. Alright, what's our temp on the water here? It's only 36 degrees. Seriously. Our thermal aqua tuners are running. Oh yeah, I forgot just how much energy it takes to heat up a big body of water. There's Weezworts in Ice Biome, maybe they can help? Uh, true. We've got a few of those lying around already. Uh, plant. They require phosphate and temperature. They don't even need atmosphere. Growth requirements, supply of gas. I take that back. But they don't have, like, atmospheric pressure requirements or anything. Just non-zero, I guess. Let's do the laziest possible... Add of weasel warts here. Why is there no power? Oh, now they finally removed this. Uh, let's go with gold amalgam. Fantastic. Uh, no, seriously, why is there no power? What's with this? There is power. What are you on about? Current load... 6 kilowatts. Are we just... eating all the power somewhere? Oh, we are running double aqua tuner here. Uh, those are 1.2 kilowatt each. I have a strong feeling that developers have an obsession with biological solutions to industrial problems. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, alright, I'm gonna disable one of these. Uh, let's just say above. 
this many decrees. I don't suppose that's going to make the difference so that we charge this battery? Oh, it actually... Sometimes. Hmm. How many of these aqua tuners are we running? Too many. Hmm. I think I took my power a little bit too for granted, even though we've got lots of natural gas generators. How much do they make each? 800 watts, so that's like two-thirds of one aqua tuner, actually. That's not that much compared to what we need. All the more reason to do an aqua tuner uh, oil coolant build. But I think for the moment, at least, I want to aggressively cool it. At least until people stop getting scalded over here. How much is this? It's like 240 watts. Oh, it's like double 240 for each because we have to power the stupid conveyor loader as well. We will eventually get to the point where there's no more regolith lying around here. Taking its sweet time though. Hmm. Hmm. What about these aqua tuners? Can we like do without any of them for a little while? Parts of the base are a little hotter than expected. So the main coolant loop. Oh, it's this it's this water coming up here from our, from our steam. We've got a dedicated loop for this part. Uh where is it? Follow the pipe, it's this one. And what's this one doing? That's our main coolant loop. And these two are for industrial stuff. Okay. The industrial stuff... The aqua tuners aren't running though. I was going to disable them for a bit, but they're already not running. So... What is that? Oh, that's the steam turbine. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I could build more natural gas generators, I guess. It's going to be a bit of a pain to expand this, but... I guess it's not that bad. We're never going to keep this ladder going up further, are we? I don't think so. We could always have the transit tube come out here. I think we kind of have to. We've got so much natural gas, at least for now. Um, but we're struggling just a little bit on power. Now it seems like we're okay. How's our temperature in these pipes? Uh, 120 degrees. And that's coming 135 over here. The steam generator's too hot.
24. It's 173 on this side. So it is cooling this. When stream says hmm, it reminds me of Siegmaya of Katarina. Uh, thank you, I think. I, I really do want this second Aquatuna running. Alright, fine. We'll expand... Uh, expand our natural gas. What are we going to print now? Oh, how much power is the incubator? Less than I thought, but we really don't need it right now. Aww, that's cute. Uh, let's just switch that off of continuous. We get free steel. That's nice. How's our oxygen? Totally fine, I think. For the most part. We're getting scolded even here. Oh, I guess it's not that surprising coming from the natural gas geyser. We didn't actually make a vacuum here. We probably should... Yeah... Forget about the um, efficiency of this gas pump electrically. Uh, we don't want the heat of this natural gas coming through this airlock. I don't think I used vacuum heat shielding down here, but it's nowhere near as important down here. It's fine if this area is hot. Didn't even bother with the automation here, either. I guess we got it backward, actually. Up there we shouldn't have, and down here we probably should. Because we're getting very close to zero uh, natural gas. Like, this could almost be costing more power than it's giving us. So let's put a Atmo pressure sensor here. Atmo pressure sensor, let's see here. And double check that we disabled the one up this end. Above zero, that's perfect. So this one's going to aggressively try to create a vacuum. Uh, so less heat will get pumped through this airlock door. Do we have a path here? Not really. We do, but we it's awkward. Okay. Seems like we've got plenty of power for the moment. Uh, let's put a couple of these wheeze watts over here. What's that? Clay. We've got way more clay than dirt, so let's use that, I guess. How's our temperature? 40 degree water. It's a start. But we need to cool the steam turbine to the point where it'll work first. Oh, it is cool. That was quick. Alright. 
We've got much cooler insulated pipe here than I would have thought. Oh no, I misread it, maybe. 116, 130. Fantastic. Right then. Why haven't we built any of this yet? Uh, Matrim is actually on the case, and he's taking supplies from up here. No, he's doing something else. I don't think there's actually room for a Weezwat here. Okay. Uh, I don't understand how no one's digging this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Someday we will finish with the auto sweeping. Filtration medium. We're up to 80 tons in this tile. Damn. And 120 degrees? That's hotter than it was before. Yeah, I really want to run both of these aqua tuners. Let's uh let's see if we can get away with it. Batteries are empty. So probably not. But I see it working. Coming out at a mere 128 degrees. Wait, this is 130? How is this lower? Oh! Oh, we're making steam here, I think. Uh-oh. That's... That's not great. You can use times sensor to limit those sweepers. So they won't be picking 40 grams instead of 1 kilogram. Uh, I guess so. Um, but they're only going to be active when a bunch of regolith drops down here anyway. So I don't really mind. Also, I forgot to snippy snip this bit of pipe. So that flow is going to be a bit more natural. Okay. Hey, we got the insulated tile. Fantastic. Uh, I never did finish this, uh, or rather, I, I finished this, but it had a problem with signal timing as opposed to signal logic, and I couldn't figure out a way around it. The idea was to have a smart storage bin that was only powered for a brief period once per day. Um, and have a memory cell triggered by the state of whether this yeah because we wanted to make sure we had a bit of phosphorite left over rather than turning all of it into fertilizer um so we're like activating the fertilizer synthesizer based on that because we can only read full or not full 
directly from the storage bin. Uh, so basically I set it up with a, a daytime sensor, like a, a cycle sensor, connected to a power switch, I think, yes. Uh, then we've got exclusive ore over here, reading from the storage bin. Does it give green when it's full or is it red? Green signal when bin is full, okay. So, either it's time to power it, or green signal because bin is full. Exclusive or I think this is, yep. If one of those conditions is true, you reset the memory cell. Otherwise, the memory cell is switched on if the bin is full. So we get power, uh, green signal here, reset, green signal here, if the bin is full, and then we're just receiving one of those. So we shouldn't reset. When this switches off, this should... I don't know. I remember looking at it and saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure that logic is right, but watching the signal propagate in slow motion, uh, this signal coming down this way was, like, too slow. And it would hold on to a state that we didn't want. Um, I'm hoping we just have enough phosphorite. Uh, where is it? Over here? Sixty-four stuns. Okay, uh, so that'll be that'll be a problem for a different day because we've definitely got enough to not have to worry about that right now. Uh, but yeah, the smart storage bin actually consumes sixty watts. I think it was continuously. Just to report full or not full on one bin. Uh, that seems a little steep. Just, just a wee bit. Uh, but yeah, I would like to... I don't want to move this storage bin, but I don't... I think we'll just expand this out over here, and I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, as soon as we've got this built and seal it, we'll cut this open. So we can add another, we can almost double our natural gas generators from that. It should be more than enough to consume all of the natural gas, uh, even when all three of the geysers are active, I imagine. How's our bullet loop doing? 163 out, that's an improvement, I'm pretty sure. It better be. I'm putting an awful lot of electricity into this. The wheeze warts are certainly not hurting. And 
now that we're not transferring temperature from here to here, uh, at least not directly through the doors, and we're using a uh, insulated pipe to come back through here, this area should be cooling. We're down to 105 in this tile. Oh, we dropped below 100. It's getting there. Smart storage does not produce a signal when not powered. Yeah, uh, so the circuitry we had there was leaving it unpowered most of the time and then writing the result to a memory cell uh, when it was powered. I think we've got random steam all over the place around here somewhere because this water keeps uh, flashing to steam. And yet, when I point around looking for it, I can't actually see any. Like, I realize it could go somewhere else and then condense, but. I'm just not actually seeing that happen. How is every job taking days to get done? We don't have everyone in sick bay or something. What's the problem here? Temperature. Oh, it's kind of hot. Yeah, we're taking in a lot of hot water. Um... We used to get all of our water from cool brine and desalination, but not so much anymore because we can't quite keep up that way. It's going to take a good while to cool all of this down. Like, a good long while, actually. Alright, we finally got that cleaned up. Fantastic. I don't think I even have any jobs queued up at the moment, actually. Yeah, I think I do want the Aqua Tuners prioritized for now. So net negative 28 degrees, 161 becomes 133, that is a pretty dramatic drop. And we're outputting here at only 160. Oh, I saw a 97 degree just here. Alright, so this area is going to get actually pretty cool eventually. Uh, it, it, we've got a lot of heat energy to dissipate, uh, or rather to pump down here. But I think that's everything set up so that it'll actually do that. So let's concentrate on expanding uh, our natural gas power. Can I ask a silly question? Sure. While we're waiting for that, I might think about trying to tame this Molten Copper Geyser. We're still trying to make ceramic to finish building this, but maybe it's not that necessary. 
At least not all the way through here. Um, we don't need double airlock doors, do we? I think one of these can just be a regular airlock. So that we maintain a vacuum here. What is this made of as well? If it's lead, then Lamau. Lead. Well, this is going to come out at 2200 degrees, but how much of that is actually going to get to the airlock door, I wonder? We can only make it... Oh wait, what's the melting point of steel? It's not the overheat temperature. Steel... 24, 26 degrees. Wow. That's actually a couple of hundred degrees above molten copper. I guess that makes sense. Actually. Why do you cooling that waste gas room instead of just venting it to space? After it cools the miners, of course. We're going to be doing that. Um, in fact, we are venting it to space. We're just not doing it that quickly yet. Um, so the waste gas comes up at, like, well, when it's here, it's 40-something degrees. It's actually only 32 degrees down here. Um, so it is cooling this, it's just not that much. Um, although, now that you mention it, We've got a lot of waste gas in here, which is a lot hotter than the temperature we're aiming for. And the new waste gas that's coming up is a lot cooler than that. So yeah, uh, it might be good already to let... Can I just... Deconstruct. Background buildings. Is that it? I could have done this the whole time. Okay. That should probably be enough uh, exposure to space. So that we stop having like two kilos of carbon dioxide per tile here. One would think even a relatively small hole would be enough for it to escape. But yeah, that's actually a lot of thermal mass that we're just ejecting into space. That's a good point. Of course, the radiant pipe is going to do a lot more when there is more gas. Maybe I'll put a bunch of these tiles back when we're done. Basically, I want to... Well, I mean, we're going to be opening and closing these bunker doors when we get this working properly. You were expecting a normal viewer, but it's me, Dio. Kono Dio the Gaming. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, that's actually... That's already dropping a bunch of heat. We're down to like 150 degrees here. That definitely helped. I don't know if it's what I want to do in the long run. Um, like, I want to maintain enough gas in this room for the coolant pipes to still work, but, um, really that just means tweaking how many exposed to space tiles we have. But bearing in mind, when the bunker doors open, uh, there's going to be more space exposure. Maybe I should have, like, another couple of airlock doors somewhere or something. 
that open up specifically to let the gas out, maintain a certain pressure. And maybe we just don't really need to worry about it. We're maintaining like uh, 200... No, it's still draining. Okay, I think we'll add more drywall. I want at least a hundred grams of uh, whatever gases to hang around in here on average. Just so that the coolant pipes can do their job. Uh, the main reason is to cool the auto sweepers and robo miner, but uh, since this heat leaks back into our base, I'd like to cool it off anyway. And we're going to use that to run a steam turbine as well. Okay. Also, the faster we cool this, uh, the more often we can dig up the regolith and, and get whatever, you know, free iron coming in, our overall throughput for iron, which is going to translate to steel. How's our room for our new power plant coming? Fantastic. Um, let's do... We don't actually need them separated. Buildings... Slime Lung, I would say, is a bit unfortunate, but actually we've got at no checkpoint, so it really doesn't matter. What's your problem? Not enough dirt. Because we don't have any dirt. Okay, so where are we going to fit this stuff? Uh, what are these made of? Iron should be fine. And the tricky thing will be the pipe input and output. We've got the perfect, like, one, two, three, four, five balancer for this going into our waste pipe without blocking each other. I need to... I need to add these to that. As for the input from natural gas. Uh, I don't think it really matters. But if we do pipe like this way, it's even a tiny amount of gas will actually block this from outputting, weirdly enough. So what I want to do is... Could we one, two, three, four, like that? Yeah, that should that should merge it all. 
and then it's actually not that much volume. I bet if we just merge it like this, it'll actually work just fine. It's all going to bottleneck into the same output pipe anyway. Shouldn't be an issue at all. They will need power and uh, circuit logic. Which is to say we're just going to connect that directly. And I think we'll just go like this. And we might want to extend our coolant pipe while we're at it. Actually make that uh, out of igneous rock. This coolant loop uh, gets auto resupplied, right? Yeah, it does. It doesn't matter if we extend it. I have to say it looks a lot nicer here without it being full of carbon dioxide and other random crap. Uh, how much carbon dioxide do we have? Only 36 grams. So I don't think we're going to be transferring heat as quickly. Oh, it's so much cooler though. Oh, wow. We're almost down. We might already be down to non-scalding temperatures over here. Oh, yeah. I forgot we were dropping... <laughs> I forgot we were dropping our um, igneous rock. Oh, sorry, everything but, uh, what is it called? Filtration medium. Uh, everything but regolith we're actually taking down to our main base. Which means we are dropping an awful lot of heat down here. Um, but I think we can manage it. It's not as much as, like, the water... The heat energy from the water that we're pumping in. So here we have uh, 1.5 ton of igneous rock, 100 kilo of clay. Clay? Is that coming from upstairs? Obsidian? Huh. I would have thought we'd see some iron here. Or maybe we already picked it all up. Um, sure. Have some water. Why is there diamond here? I'm sure I had a reason to build something with diamond up here, but I don't remember what it was. Alright, we've got like... 30 grams or so of oxygen, of uh, carbon dioxide per tile here. I was going to say I think I would like to see some more, but we're already just about hitting our targets for cooling this place. So... So maybe that's fine, actually.
I mean, our target is to keep the Robo Miner and Auto Sweeper from overheating up here, as far as we're concerned with that. Um, but I also want to keep this area cool enough not to scold people, which it already is. Nice. Very good. Very, very, very good, actually. I am a fan of this. Oh, and if if it doesn't transfer temperature between the radiant pipe and the room as fast, I guess that means we're going to reach minimum temperature and stop running the aqua tuna constantly. As, as long as this... Like, it's already happened, as long as this is cool enough to work and not take damage, and this is cool enough for nobody to get scolded, uh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's a win. So I think we are creeping towards ready to open these doors again. What have I got this set to? Below 100 degrees Celsius. We're still at 150? Oh yeah, the thermosense is a bit hotter than the gas. Oh, the gas here is actually 150. We don't really need this room below, uh, to be below 100 degrees before we let the regolith through. Be nice if we had more power though. Why aren't we building this? Invalid building location... Uh, are we just waiting on a builder? Errands, supply... Yeah, I think I need to prior this. Seven, six, actually make that six, seven, eight, there we go. Okay. Carbon dioxide, 30 grams or so. How about... How about we have about this much uh, space exposure? Let's see if we maintain like one or two hundred grams of CO2. Nobody getting scalded. Did we ever think we'd see the day? Why is there a bit of plastic here? Uh, is that not plastic? Oh, 
I just failing to point at it or click on it or something? Regolith. Plastic. There it is. 145 degrees. What temperature does it melt at? 159. It's really close to making that weird coolant. I definitely don't want that weird coolant here. Can we sweep this away? Fantastic. So why do we have no power here all the time? Probably because the aqua tuners are running. I'm guessing the aqua tuners are implicitly a higher priority. Weird cooler? Yeah. It's it's called uh nap naphtha. You melt plastic and you get this coolant, which then the solid temperature for that is negative 50, and the gas is 538 degrees. It doesn't have that much thermal conductivity, actually, but it has a lot of specific heat capacity. Uh, crude oil... Crude oil's temperature range is more narrow, but other than that, it's... The thermal conductivity is way better. Although, thermal conductivity is not necessarily everything. Uh, this loop is more than long enough to... Equalize, uh, with the temperature with what it's passing through. So I guess higher heat capacity would be a bit more important. So it'll carry more heat away. Oh, we're down to 46 degrees. Oh, it's so cold in here. Okay, it's not that cold in here, but still. The coolant is 45 degrees, 37 over here. Yeah, I think we definitely need more gas in this room. Uh, it's actually down to double digits. Yeah, we need that... We need that drywall back. Where are they? Oh, I probably need to prio it if I ever want to see it done. That's probably how that works. Speaking of, why are we not building... Invalid building location, awaiting delivery... It's not, like, unreachable or anything, right? Mesh tile, errands, building or supply... My trim... Here we go. Nope, that was supplying the fertilizer synthesizer. How dare you. Oh, there's no power here. They can go through this airlock four more times before it gets power, but they're not going to use the Atmo suit dock. Okay then. Wait, what did I print? No! What? I... Uh, do we have an autosave? When was this? 2033. That was two minutes ago. <laughs> okay. How did... I definitely clicked towards the shine bug and then... I don't know. Bye, Bubbles. Simply Coco, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Yeah, I think the UI got a little bit unresponsive and like mouse went to the right, button went down. But that's not how the input was read. Oh, it's it's less than 40 degrees in here. Can you believe it? That's nice. Look how cool the steam turbine is. It's 22 degrees. Fantastic. Uh, we've got an awful lot more work to do in terms of heating this uh, water before we start taking some of this heat and mitigating our power costs with it. Uh, but the, act, the the job of actually cooling this place is pretty much done. I could probably make these thermal aqua tuners a lot less aggressive for the moment. Uh, why don't we say if above 50 degrees and if above 40... Uh, let's say 34 degrees. Sorry, 36 degrees. So I'm not going to run both of the aqua tuners for now. And hopefully that means we've got enough power for something else. No, not really. I really don't understand how this is taking so long to build. Even if it is one Atmo suit at a time in here. Picking up slime. Uh, I'm gonna do it. is doing it. What are we printing? Not bubbles this time. Shove vol egg. Sounds delicious. Shove vol egg. Nom. And you're leaving. This uh, this one Atmo suit through the airlock is all well and good when we've finished this build, but it is agonizingly slow when we want to add to it. I could let the dupes in without the Atmo suit. They will get upset, um, what with the 12 kilograms of natural gas in one tile. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, we are, we are not running out of natural gas. We definitely need more throughput to consume it right now. Priority, errands, current errand. Where are you going? Oh, that's a long way to go. Wow. No, why are you sleeping there? <sighs> okay. Fine. Priority nine. 
Can I try the pipes only? No? I guess not. It's always Kevin. I think I need... Uh, we kind of need a transit tube all the way down here. But we need it on the other side of the Atmosuit dock. What if we just put it here? Is that okay? I think so. We're going to need an entrance at both sides, aren't we? Kelvin Klein? Wait, what? What do we make this out of? Oh, plastic. We're going to run out. Uh, 89 times 2. Uh, 178 tiles. And this would be... I'd have to move that, actually. Let's just measure out how much of this we could do right now if we wanted to. Um... It's not saying how much this would cost. Oh, 4,900 left. We actually could do this right now. Okay, uh, we might have to go around this or that thing. Now, it is Veldak sleeping on the floor? Uh... Yeah, I don't know why. I did turn off... It's, it's probably because uh, we had yellow alert earlier. Okay. Normally, this pipe would go down this way, so let's do that. And that's actually super convenient. I'll need to move this uh, fire pole. Uh, I'll need another lane down here if we're going to have the ladder going back up. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Decon these two. Just double check that this is what we want up here. And... Uh, how about this? That's not quite right. Needs to go down one more tile. And we want an output like this. It should be fine. Uh, I definitely want an output around here somewhere. They're going to be wearing a spacesuit anyway, so why don't we just drop them here? And how hot is it here? 79 degrees? I don't think it matters. Unless something melts. Yeah, there's no overheat temperature for the transit tube access. I should have done this sooner. This is going to make a really big difference. But 
when the dupes come here for iron and stuff. It is going to take a little while to build, though. Air's not so good in here. Uh, let me put back something I had here before, which I probably shouldn't have removed. Oh, we've already got it here. Carbon dioxide... Hmm. Uh, element sensor CO2. If we detect it for 200 seconds... And atmo pressure at this tile is above 50 grams. I don't think that's 200 seconds. Oh, it's a buffer. So whenever we detect CO2, it's supposed to work for 200 seconds. But I didn't put a buffer on the uh, atmo pressure. Which is probably fine, to be honest. So, if we are getting rid of CO2 at this level... Why do we have all of this mess up here? Especially the chlorine. Chlorine is not helping. I could put some airflow tiles here. And... A lot of that's going to drop. Looks like chlorine is heavier than oxygen. It's just that these rooms are too wide for the gas to naturally find its way out. What about this? Uh, that's actually pretty normal. Alright, did we get any of this built? We got one natural gas generator. Amazing. Okay, can we get even more than one? What's this? Oh, it's a pipe. Yeah, that's actually merging super easily. It's hardly any uh, gas in this pipe. Alright, we have 60 grams of CO2 in this tile. That's not that bad. What's the temperature like? 142, 138, 140. Is this hotter or was the... The oil's only coming back at 48. The oil is gaining like 13 degrees going through here. So the thermal conductivity isn't that bad. But I'm th thinking more gas? Wait, was that oxygen? What is oxygen doing here? Uh, what? Who, who let oxygen into that room? There's a little bit here. Oh, I think it's coming from that plump I was looking at a minute ago. Okay, then. Wow, the transit tube's actually getting built relatively... Relatively very quickly, actually. Uh, we will be needing some power there. 
easily enough. I forgot to set the settings for this. If pressure above a thousand, sure, why not? As long as it's above an amount which will ensure that we're not sending tiny little packets of gas like this. So that'll be more power efficient. And up here, unconditional because we want a vacuum here so that not as much heat goes through the airlock door. I definitely could have, should have had a vacuum lock here, but I didn't realize that those were a thing uh, when I built this. Uh, we're creeping up to... it's still only like 63 grams, actually. Let's go for about this much exposure to space and see how that goes. Thimble reed seed. Oh, we've got... I thought we had 80,000 or something of these. It's actually 80.24399 somehow. I don't know how we have a fraction of a thimble seed, but okay. Where did our rainbow sparkler just go? Alright, so we've added 1600 watts, actually, to our natural gas power plant. That's not quite two thermo aquatuners, but I'm sure that is pushing us over the edge for now. Uh, once we get another one or two of these built, I'll turn the aqua tuners on to be super aggressive. Alright. What about our transit tube? Still got a ways to go. Actually, it's shockingly close to fit. No, 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 this part's not done yet. Transit tube blueprint looks eerily similar to transit tube itself. It's going to be well worth it once this is done, though. I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to spend some time in sandbox trying to figure out what my base should eventually look like. And it's definitely going to involve a lot more transit tubes. Come to think of it. Well, no, I, like, I, we're still, we're definitely going to have the main bus. I, I want to build it in such a way that uh, we don't have to, like, overhaul things as we go. So, like, there's going to be the ladder up and pole down and room for transit tube that we're going to add later. Three tiles before the door on either side of the main bus so that we have room for transit tube accesses, we have room for large transformers. Mojo D, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How is your stream today? Timberborn. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Look, we got this place so cold that people don't get scalded. Well, but sleepy, can relate. 
Darth Lightly. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the ore is actually a channel points reward. How much gas do we have here? 98 grams? Yeah, I think... I think having like four tiles of space exposure here to get rid of our waste gas is going to be about what I want. We want just enough gas in here so that... Well, actually... Now that we got the temperature down, we probably want to get it back to... Because the gas coming in, the waste gas, is colder than the room, and we want to cool the room. Uh, we probably want to vent it as slowly as possible, and we don't care if the pressure gets higher. Uh, and higher pressure will mean the temperature will exchange better with the radiant pipes. Yeah, I think that's right. Cool. How's our temperature here? 80 degree water? Fantastic. The old cooling the regolith game, indeed. Uh, I, I have big plans for, like, next time. But I, I still want to, like, go ahead with our first foray into space here. Uh, this is just an infinite mine, basically. It was going to be... I mean, I guess it could, still could be... Uh, but the idea for this was going to be so that we could have space scanners with better than 0% scan quality. Um, but I think they have like a cone shape to determine quality if nothing's blocking them. So we want a bit of a different shape here. Probably like... Two bunker doors and robo miners like this. Oh, we could put them under glass as well. So something, uh, something along these lines. Uh, let's see. Window tile. We can use diamond. We've, we can make 122 tiles of diamond like this. And that's before, before we mine anymore. Hilariously, quantity instead of quality is possible. They have a cone, indeed. So, will this cone... Is, are we going to get 100% out of this one, or do we need even more exposure? Uh, that's definitely something to play with in Sandbox, rather than taking the time to build it before finding out the hard way. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, actually, as, like, spaghetti as it is. Uh, this will be our first, or it, it already is. Pretty much our first infinite mine. We have 25 tons. Wait, why does it say regolith times 5, regolith times 3, regolith, regolith? I. What? Uh, do we have different kinds of regolith? Well, whatever the case, we have a lot of regolith here. Uh, it looks like over 200 tons. And for some reason a little bit of gold amalgam. I think that was there before we started dropping stuff onto this tile. Max stack of 25 tons. Okay. Uh, I assume, or I'm guessing, there's a limit to how much we can store on this tile, eventually. 
Not entirely sure how the game decides to split stacks, but it does. Fair enough. I'm really looking for the uh, forward to the day when we see a clean floor here. Uh, it's, it's coming a lot sooner on the right side than the left. Have we built the rest of our power plants? Oh, we actually have. Alright, so we should be in a surplus of power for quite a while here. We have over 10 kilos of natural gas per tile. Um, around about here. How fast do these consume it? 90 grams per second. Times... 9? Uh, 810 grams per second. So... About 1 and a quarter seconds times 12. It doesn't sound like that much, except we've constantly got more coming in. Oh, it's actually bottlenecked. Wow. Except... Oh, we're pumping... Hold on. Did I get my logic wrong here? I think so. Uh... What am I looking at here? I want it to be... Higher priority to consume the incoming natural gas. Better get to bed before I fall asleep. All right, take care, Mojo. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for the raid. Have a good sleep. Uh, so I, th what is this gas bridge? Is that going to the filter? Oh yeah, I did want this to be a higher priority than this. But I also want it to be a higher priority than taking in natural gas from this room, I think. Probably. Oh, I don't need to build anything to make that happen. We can just do it like this. Right, so incoming natural gas here stops this pump from doing anything, which is what we want. The, the high pressure natural gas here is our reserve, uh, which we only, uh, we only get after we fill these up. So here it is. High pressure gas vent. Uh, once the last container is full, and only when it's full, we're going to open this. It says high threshold. It should be high threshold like 100%. And low threshold, let's say 90 I didn't think I'd need this many natural gas generators to consume all of our incoming natural gas. I think overall we probably don't, and I've actually built enough to uh, to run out eventually. But we're very close to having our transit tube system here.
failed at cooking up a stone. Alright. So, I think now we can focus on... I was going to say on this project, but it's basically finished. How much gas do we have here now? 125, 6 grams? I'm thinking it's probably a mistake to close up that many tiles of drywall again. But as the pressure builds, I might want to just remove the tiles one by one this time, now that we've reached our goal temperature-wise. Alright, um... Is this about as cold as it's going to get? I don't think so, but it's going to take a while to get colder. I think this is a reasonable temperature to say we can let more regolith down, though. So what temperature are we at? 140. Let's say if we are below 150... We can open the doors. And that'll prevent the Robo Miner from working. But we've got a little circuit here. Uh, to... Uh-oh. No, it'll work. Uh, we've got a little circuit here to time it. So we'll close these doors just long enough. For the Robo Miner to work. And then open the doors again. This was supposed to be for a space scanner, is the thing. Oh, wait, what? Oh, oh, oh. I was trying to prevent the Robo Miner from overheating itself. But we've definitely sorted that out. Unfortunately, we can't, as far as I know, we can't detect regolith itself. Um, so this is what we need to do. Obviously, I'll have to play with the circuit a little bit here. Uh, I think I should probably add, uh, where is it, a signal switch, so we can just manually say, open the doors. Oh wait, no, the doors need to be closed for the Robo Miner to run, so this is fine actually. Wait, no. The doors are going to open again. That's the problem, right? Or did I change that? The temperature is too high for the doors to open. Because we just brought in a whole bunch of heat. Uh, with the regolith. So that's buying our Robo Miner some time. Yeah, I think this might be fine, actually. Already. Or not. I could set the temperature threshold a little bit lower. But I think that'll just get things cooler, and then regolith will come in, and then the temperature... That it jumps back up to will be a little bit lower than it was before, but not not by the same number of units as the offset of our temperature threshold, I think. Now we have an auto sweeper. What else is entombed here? Oh, that's the plant. Oh, no, it's the filter for the solids. Maybe I should have put it up near the robo miner. 
It really is a bit slow having just one Robo Miner here. Then again, overall it's going to be more than fast enough. Robo Miner stops because doors are open. Circuit finishes its timer thing. Or not, because... Because we're cool enough here already. Huh. Why did we close? Adding the AND gate really complicated things, I think. Well... The Robo Miner is getting stuff done. While the doors slowly move. I think we need a buffer gate on the temperature setting. So it stops flickering. Oh, it's not like a solar panel, the space scanner. It doesn't matter if we let regolith fall onto it. So, something like this. Uh, should actually be totally fine. If we want a scanner that will get maximum uh, efficiency, like scan efficiency. Because the space scanner doesn't have an overheat temperature. It has to literally melt for that to be a problem. Alright, let's put our scanner back. Wait, what did I make that out of? Uh, I don't think we're getting hot enough to melt lead again. Three hundred and twenty-seven degrees. It sh should be fine. Then again, we're going to be getting infinite iron out of this. Iron solid melting point uh fifteen hundred thirty four. Yeah, that's uh that's a little bit warmer. If it's gonna be under the regolith we'll make it out of iron. What's our scan efficiency though? Scan quality 0%. What? Why? Wait, this only costs 25? Really? That's cheap. I'll just... this just for one space scanner? The space scanner that we already have uh, gives us 0% scan quality. It's effective enough for finding meteor showers, um, I think. Maybe that's the reason why occasionally we have a little glitch letting Regolith through with that other build. But, um, scan quality 0%. Why is this? We got a higher quality before when we built here. It's not the ladders in the way, surely. I mean, it could be. That's how we accidentally printed bubbles earlier. We got a hitch, and then... 
The mouse moved after that. Let's just dig this. But yeah, you do have to... Do, uh, to have something exposed to space, you do have to do a lot. Uh, you have to have bunker doors, close up when meteors are coming in. And then you have to open up and regolith will fall down. You need to dig that away. And then you've got a whole lot of heat to deal with. Um, things will eventually break or even melt. Scan quality 0%. I have absolutely no idea why this is the case. We got a much better scan quality before. Space scanner. Networks of many scanners can scan more efficiently than one on its own. Doesn't tell us anything about why the individual scan quality is lower. Scan network quality, 0%. I wonder if all of these machines, like, making noise around it are bad, or if it's just, like, ladders up above it, or both. It needs space exposure, which is blocked by drywalls. Oh. Let's try that. Uh, we're going to lose a whole bunch of CO2 when we do this, but that's probably fine. As long as we're keeping things cool enough here, uh, I guess it doesn't matter how thick the CO2 is. Deconstruct background buildings. Okay, so let's try that. It's the conveyor receptacles? Machines that interfere. Oh. So it could be both? If the conveyor receptacles stop moving about, like, once we're done picking up all the regolith, will the scan quality go up again? Scan quality... is still 0%. Up oh, 2%, 5%, 9%. It's all over the place. A lot of the time it's zero. Interesting. That seems to strongly suggest that it's both. What if we... give our conveyor rails a little snip? And these machines will stop. And scan quality is not going back up. Oh. 2%, 3%, 8%, 3%. Are we going to close these doors, or what? Bunker door. Green signal open, red close and block. Um, if temperature is low enough, green signal. That's an end. If... Oh, this is... This is not detecting it yet. This is detecting it earlier. Are we... Are we gonna detect... Meteors? Before they hit us? Oh, here we go. 
No. Okay. Uh, cutting it a little close there. Just, just a wee tad bit. So I wonder if removing the drywall over here would help with the response time. I'm thinking probably. Uh, background buildings. Ah, uh, PHL streams. Oh, uh, wait, what? Also, Mazzle Fazzle. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I heard that bonk and thought it must be repetitive beats. Usually I build the regolith mining high above the scanners with airflow tiles in between. But uh, for the next iteration on this, don't we want the scanners close to the bunker doors because they scan in like a V pattern? Or do we just have to have it like far ahead and off to either side? Yeah, making the machine stop didn't seem to help at all, actually. Let's reconnect those. Mich reduces scan quality if machine center is within 14 tiles. 14 tiles? How are we supposed to... How are you supposed to auto-mine the regolith if... So, so 14 tiles away, and we want a V-shape to get the most out of one scanner. That is a lot. Yeah, that's a bit of a toll order. Well, I'm really not that concerned about Scanner at the moment. We've got our infinite mine. I could maybe put another auto miner here. And it'll get entombed sometimes, but this one will rescue it, and when the doors are open, this one will work. Okay. What else are we doing? I never did get that ceramic. I think we needed coal or something. What are we doing here? Monument base. Uh, where does this... What? Monument base. Why can't I... Why can't I even see what this would look like? Monument midsection. I do have 7,500 steel. Oh, I had to pick a material, even though there was only one. Wow, that's kind of big. This one could be ceramic or plastic. 
No, we have to just pick those. That That is indeed a monument. What are we printing? Some copper? Uh, but yeah, I wanted more ceramic. Let's queue that up. How much more can I make? 25 kilos out of 1.8 tons. Uh, let's make at least 20. Oh, I can only... I don't have enough clay. No, wait, that's different. I have way more clay than we need. That was a different scale. You have any mod that disable auto selection of material? Uh, possibly. I have one that lets me queue up buildings even if we don't have enough resources. Is this thing finished? Uh, very nearly. There is water on the bedroom floor. Is that so? Maybe these should be mesh tiles. I'd rather end up with a little bit of water on the mess hall floor than the bedroom floor. Also, that's preventing airflow anyway. That is the problem. Could be. Tio Griva, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And there it is. I think we've got it all queued up now. Our transit system down here. Okay. Uh, we need... How much? 400 per tile. Good grief. Uh, we definitely don't need two of these types of airlock door. We want the vanilla airlock door on the inside because that can't... Oh no, wait, it's the same. Either of these, they literally have to melt for this to be a problem. Uh, but I do prefer to make the airlock door out of lead if I can. Uh, ceramic. We had way more than enough clay. It's just cold. It's bottlenecking ceramic. We already made 14. Oh no, we already made like 6, I think. How much steel do we have? We haven't queued it up for a minute. We've got four tons. That's good. What about iron? Only 292 kilograms. I would have thought we'd have a bit more... I guess the iron that we get from here is really not that much. Gold amalgam. Almost 5 grams. 4.3 grams. Oh wait, that's, uh, I meant kilograms, kilograms. Yeah, it's, it's barely anything. Okay, then. Uh, even so, it is coal, I think, is our bottleneck. Uh, we do have patches, though, now. More than one. Why do we only have three or four now, though? How did that happen? Wait, are we feeding them? Yeah, we're feeding them. It's kind of weird. Alright, so we're gonna want a vacuum in here. If I, if I place a door here and then deconstruct it, uh, we're going to want to pump out 
whatever gas ends up in here anyway. Also, the gas is going to get super hot over here. Hmm. Taming a volcano. Kind of tricky. We're going to put in water so that it flashes to steam. So that we can use a steam turbine to sink the heat. We're going to need 100% to not let any gas out of here. Um, I think it's going to get too hot to put a auto sweeper. Probably. I mean, the copper itself will come out at 2200 degrees. 9.4 kilos per second. I really need... Uh, maybe we should make the room bigger. So it'll take more thermal mass. Uh, it, it, it'll have more thermal mass, rather. So it'll take more to flash this whole area to an insane temperature. Seems like a good idea, actually. You know what, the more I think about it, in this one instance, I really don't want to be messing with metal airlocks. I'll do the... I'll do the cheesy thing and make water lock. Um, and I think I'm just not going to wait on all of that ceramic. As much as... How about igneous rock? As much as this is like one of the best use cases for it, uh, it's just too much. Melting point 1409 degrees. That could be a problem. How many kilograms of water do you want to put in that room? Uh, I'm not sure. Probably more rather than fewer because, again, we want more thermal mass, so it takes more to heat up the room. Uh, melting point 1409, this is coming out at 2200, so that's no good. Do we actually need uh, ceramic? At least for the tiles down the bottom, maybe. On the other hand, maybe the moment that this drips out, kind of like glass, uh, it solidifies. We just end up with a ton of heat. But we're not going to end up with literally molten copper, like, sloshing around like this for even a moment. Uh, ceramic, here we go. Melting point 1849, so it's still less than uh, the molten copper's temperature. Do we have anything we can make insulated tile out of? Which the ceramics, like, no doubt got a better. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's more insulating. Lower thermal conductivity. But... What we're really looking for is just... Ooh, we've got mafic rock. That might be good. 92k. Uh, 1400 degrees. You can actually do the math with volcano properties and material. Yeah, I figured. I just don't have the patience, to be honest. Uh, I figure if we make it fairly big and put plenty of water in there, 
the it just not so much water that we get the steam height so high pressure that it's hard to output water back in um then it should take quite a lot to heat it up which will be safer you can double isolation as in have a two layer of igneous equals one of ceramic Uh, but the only thing I'm worried about, well, not the only thing, I'm going to have a layer of vacuum around this, so temperature-wise it will be isolated, um, but what I'm actually concerned about is the insulated tile literally melting. So that's why I'm checking the melting points of these. Uh, how about obsidian? Melting point twenty seven hundred twenty six. I think this is our this is our boy. Then obsidian. Yes, indeed. All right. So insulated tile obsidian. Can we just do it like this? We can. Fantastic. And I think I just want to scrap everything we've got here. Oh. So that we can kind of start from scratch without all this mess around. And we're gonna go obsidian. We've got 15.6k. It takes 400 for one tile. Uh, so we have a bit less than 40 tiles. Is that going to be enough for what I want to do? I think we only need the obsidian down the bottom, though. Uh, I think this should be more than enough. You just need the bottom tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... 1, 2, 3, 4... Can we move? So we've got enough bucket, if you like. Uh, oh, it's trying to erupt right now. That's scary. Are the ladders going to melt? I think they are. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think these need to be obsidian. How much is this? 100? Sure. And then something cheaper, igneous rock. Do we need... I don't think we need to do a circle all the way around with... Um, with vacuum. We could do that and this would be literally isolated heat-wise. Um, but I think we'll just do that for the way in and out. And... We'll do a, uh, like an S-bend. Uh, actually, crude oil, uh, liquid, goes to gas at, wait, what? Petroleum liquid, 400 degrees. Does heating crude oil just turn it into petroleum? As opposed to putting it through an oil refinery. That's weird. Evaporation point 399 degrees C. Additional states, petroleum. That's weird. 
It breaks the pipe if it transforms in the pipe. Yeah, yeah, any state change uh, in a pipe, it doesn't like it. Um, so this is made out of obsidian, right? It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um... Well, no, this doesn't have to be that hot, but it doesn't have to be able to withstand being that hot. It just has to... not flash to steam, basically. We need to make sure... How many steam turbines can I fit here? A couple? It's probably enough. Subsidian. That is not. So let's say we have a couple of steam turbines. Uh, let's be safe and make them out of steel. Get that built. So we're going to put some oil here, so we have a water lock. Oh, we need a vacuum though as well. Do we though? Do I care if a little bit of temperature leaks out here? I mean, possibly. It depends how much temperature we're talking about. All steam turbines overheat at 100. Yeah, I know. Steel isn't needed. I, I'm just not... I'm, I'm not going to underestimate a volcano. That's all that is. Until I've seen it work once. Uh, how much... I think I would need, like, a double... Double liquid luck, right? So we could have our vacuum there so that temperature's not going anywhere from here. I mean, some temperature will leak through this. But it'll, it'll probably be manageable. There are even sour gas boilers that convert oil to natural gas into a totally uh, overcomplicated way. I saw sour gas somewhere. That was, um... Methane. Natural gas? No. Something else flashes to sour gas. I can't remember what it is. Is it crude oil? Gas range turns sour... Uh, turns natural gas into something. Uh, crude oil, that was petroleum. Um, was it the thing plastic turns into? Yeah, there it is. Naphtha, if it reaches 539 degrees, turns into sour gas, which turns into methane, which turns into natural... Good grief. So overcomplicated only if you want to produce 200% of the energy that you are using. Wait, what? Heat oil until it flashes to sour gas, then cool it down until it liquefies to methane, and then heat it again so it becomes natural gas. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, they've trapped themselves. Good job. They actually built this quite quickly. Um, I don't suppose we can have a self-cooling pair of steam turbines here. 
I really don't know... I think if we have plenty... Like, the steam turbine... It, it cools more stuff faster if the... Uh, if the input temperature of the steam is higher, right? But it itself will get warmer. I think is how that works. Also, speaking of how that works, uh, I don't think we can fit a tap here. Uh, let's steek on this for a sec. And... Bottle emptier. If you use a counterflow... I guess I should have put the obsidian ladder over here. I'm not going to go for anything fancy, like with uh, everything automated and machines and stuff, uh, this first time. We're just going to have the dupes come in to pick up the copper, uh, if and when it's safe. Actually, can I fit a checkpoint? Can we put, like... Yeah, we could probably put checkpoints in the middle of the... Waterlock, right? Okay, so we want crude oil just because it's got the highest um, enable auto bottle, just because it's got the highest uh, evaporation point. What are we printing? Whoops. Paku. Delicious. Oh, it's trying to erupt again. Errands. People are thinking about delivering this bottle emptier. No one's actually doing it. Here we go. Slowed is on the job. Whoops. No, 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 no. Follow cam slowder. Oh, we've actually already got some bottles even. Or not bottles. Why do you have random water in your living quarters? It's not random. It's, uh, it's definitely there on purpose. You can be sure of that. Also, it's not in the living quarters. We dropped it down here. I don't know how it got there, but uh, when it happens again, it won't be in the living quarters. You'll finish the project when the volcano will go dormant. That's fine. That'll just give us a chance to analyze it. Uh, I guess... Until this is done, I could just turn these into mesh tiles. And we will need a pump in here. For when it comes time to empty this thing. Snippy snip. Uh, our main power grid doesn't really have a way to connect to this easily, but I'm not interested in this as power generation, at least not yet. Uh, it's really just here as a heat sink.
I'm not a thousand percent expecting... Uh, to be able to have the steam turbine self-cool, but I would like to run that experiment. Actually, I haven't tried it outside of hydrogen before. I don't want to run two experiments at once. Um, let's let's not confound our variables. Let's at least put hydrogen in here if we're going to try the self cooling. Maybe the volcano isn't the best place where make this equipment. What? but we're doing it for science. It's fine. Uh, let's get rid of these. Put a airlock. Uh, maybe this will get a bit hot. And then... We need to steal hydrogen from ourselves. It's way up here. Hmm. That might be a little bit of a problem. What's your problem? Oh, they're actually just idle. Wait, how are you idle? Oh, because it's break time. But why are you staying? Why are you standing here? There we go. Alright, um, this will go here, this will go here. Oh, this is actually the perfect opportunity to try that one vanilla airlock idea. It was double, uh, Mechanical airlock with a gap. Let's put these tiles here. I might move this one. Uh, double mechanical airlock with a gap. And we're going to put a plastic, uh, a mini pump here. We're going to detect if there's any atmosphere. And we're going to have checkpoints. And they're going to have to be one tile away from the mechanized airlocks. Otherwise, the dupes will stand here waiting for it and the door will open. So we're only going to allow the checkpoints when when there's a vacuum detected right here. And we're going to filter nitrogen back into this room and everything else out here. And I guess we could actually just connect these. Let's put our filter here, I guess. And output. And this is going to go... Why is there pipe here? Uh, this is going to go back to 
the room with the steam turbines. I could put it all the way over here so that pressure is higher on this side, but I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. We've only got 30k lead left. Why are we not dropping off more oil here though? too much about an Atmo suit this time. Oh, we've already got made sure they're using Atmo suits down here. It's fine. Actually, we can just decon that one and swap that one. And then the material to put the insulator tile will be waiting. Scalding? What? Oh no, not this again. No, get out. What is this made of? Lead? How hot is it? More importantly, okay, there's not that much CO2 in here, so I think the vacuum lock is working. But why are you down here even? Did I already give him a move order? Uh, repair errand. That's why. How hot is this? Why is there water in here? Every single mystery. Uh, this is actually made of iron, so this definitely shouldn't have been made of lead. Fenwu's only a little bit scalded. It's... I'm not gonna say fine. Alexis, thank you for the follow. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, how hot is it here? It's only 111. For the steam, that is. 231 kilograms, so it's not a pressure problem. How did this happen, though? Oh, no. Uh, this pipe is broken. It's made of sandstone? Oh, no. Also, we're pumping steam into it? Well, there's your problem. It's just as well it did break. Oh my god. It really is just as well uh, that the pipe broke. Panic basket, right? Um, I think this being made out of lead wouldn't have been a problem uh, if we hadn't accidentally kind of pumped hot steam into this sandstone gas pipe, setting up the steam rocket already. <laughs> okay, I really need this replaced as a priority. I think it's okay to leave the aqua tuners running. Yay, rockets? Uh, five minutes till rockets. At least five minutes. I can't believe we're still picking up the regolith, though. Hmm. 
It's all regolith too. Right? There's like nothing coming out of the chute down here. Okay. Uh, insulated pipe, igneous rock. That shouldn't even need to be there still, actually. But I don't want to let this gas out in here. So, let's just do this. Until all of this is repaired. Don't go in there without a suit. How dare you. Atmo suit checkpoint made of iron. Top priority, please. Everyone relatively healthy. 84, 50. Kevin's on 50. Kevin, why are you... You, you didn't go there without a spacesuit, did you? Kevin? Top priority, Aaron. Ben Wu is on the case. Fantastic. The scalding is not fantastic. I can't see his health properly. Yikes. Um, okay, can we... Can we stop these... Thermal aqua tuners? Leave that alone for now. We really need to get the gas out of this room. This uh, little airlock area that is... What are we printing? Oxyfan. Still waiting on the rest of that oil. Uh, can we maybe sweep the ceramic before it gets melted into oblivion? After all the trouble we went to to make it. Fantastic. Scalding is not fantastic. I guess we don't really need to do the pipe swap. Can we just cancel that? Decon that. What happens if I decon this pipe? Especially the one that's on top of the heavy watt conductive joint plate, I wonder. Should I, like, block this off before I do that? Maybe I should just never touch this pipe again. Why don't we simply add a vent? That might be good. the temperature over here? 140 something degrees? 120 something? Yeah, this whole system's working pretty well, is what I was gonna say. And then I saw that this is 70 degrees. What did I set this to? Below 150. Uh, okay. 
Maybe I should set it a little bit higher. Are we not gonna... Oh, I, I meant below 140. There we go. No? What temperature is it here? 138. Maybe below 100 wasn't that ridiculous. We haven't been through so much already that he's developed an immunity. Oh no. How much gas do we have? Not that much. Um... Yeah, I, I think we will... Go back to only having a few tiles for the gas to escape. Otherwise our coolant can't do its job very well. Now this thing's broken or damaged. It's made of iron. Jeez. Uh, maybe it's fine to just leave that water there. Speaking of water... If I bring one kilo of ice, and then it gets heated up, uh, does that turn into exactly one tile of water, or is there a loss? Also, we do want to make a vacuum in here before we get started as well. Uh, it might be easier to just add a nice big gas pump down here. Oh, I didn't set this filter. Uh, unbreathable hydrogen goes this way. Let's do it like this for now. Exactly one kilo of water. Okay, good. Uh, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I want uh, probably 24 kilos of water here. Let's try it this way. Storage bin. I need a little power. Mm, that's fine for the moment. And we're going to say 24 kilograms of uh, liquefiable ice. And high priority it so it actually happens. Oh, was that? That's it already. Storing 24 kilos of ice. Nice. That was much easier than pumping water. Uh, I want to make sure we sweep up everything here first. Before we do anything. We 
need this oil before... Before we start pumping out this gas. Uh, this needs power wires going up this way. We need to get hydrogen from all the way up here. Which is going to be a slight nuisance. I guess we can do it like this. Maybe I should bottle it. Can I do that? Might be easier. I'm gonna end up with more hydrogen coming this way than I actually want. But that should be fine as soon as we snip the... Uh, I would have to turn the bridges around. I could do that. The bridges don't actually contain anything. Uh, snip and then turn the bridges around and the hydrogen will come back and get consumed. The extra that we don't want. Sweep errand. It's not getting done. Uh, how about... Why don't I just put this container here? I don't really care about the sandstone, granite, phosphorite. It's actually saying there is a place to sweep this to, but it's not happening even though it's priority 9. That's kind of weird. What's our storage look like? Full all day, every day? This is just for lead. If all of our storages are full, then why is it not like the red icon? Oh, pressure is too high. I should have thought of that. Alright. I guess if there's a little water down here, it's fewer tiles for this to suck up. Sweet priority isn't very important. It's the storage priority that... Uh, Casts a task. Okay. I don't know where we've got a storage bin that says we can store ceramic, though. Oh, they are doing it. Okay, fantastic. Here comes our hydrogen. Wow. Reservoirs for gas really don't hold that much. Did this need to be a high pressure gas vent? I don't think so. Uh, on the other hand... I, I do want it to be a high pressure gas vent for for when we've got this airlock thing working. So I'll just have to pay attention uh, to how much we put in here. Wait, that's not right. Snippy snip. Oh, it's not powered. Well, there's your problem. Oh, they can't 
will they will they go through an unpowered checkpoint? Uh, I guess there's one way to find out. Where's a dupe? Oh, I saw that. What was that? Did I imagine a dupe come down here? Or did I see, like, something drop? I think I saw something drop. Oh, nope, there was a dupe. Okay. Okay. Sneaky. Sneaky cavern. Uh, yeah, they can absolutely go through the checkpoint while it's unpowered. Okay. Which means they should be able to get this wire built. How's this thing doing? Still a bit busted. That repair delivery is taking 600 years. Uh, we've got our... Steam's getting a bit cold. Why is the steam not going through this vent? Gas vent over pressure? 200 and... I'm sorry, what? 231 kilograms of steam in one tile. Uh... There may have been more ice here than I thought there was. Wow. Wow. 231 kilograms of steam in one tile. Magic of steam? It's beyond witchcraft. What the hell? That's wild. What am I going to do with that much steam? Oh no. I could vent it into space. I, I, I think... I think that's the way to go, honestly. Water is 1,000 kilograms per tile? Oh. Oh, I was... I think I was thinking of a different scale. As if this was 231 tons of steam. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How much... How much pressure do we have here? 980 kilograms. Okay, yeah, no, that's way less pressure than I thought it was. Why does it look so thick, then? If this is only 231 kilograms, and this is 980 kilograms, that's weird. Isn't it perfect for the steam rocket? Uh, I don't know. So, gas vent over pressure, high pressure gas vent, 20 kilograms. Huh. Huh. I never realized that our steam room is so much more high pressure than, like, the chlorine room. Wow. So we actually can't... We actually can't use a, a gas vent to put steam in here at all. What happens if we simply deconstruct this? Where does the steam go? And what will happen if I deconstruct this tile in particular? You could remove the water... 
with the turbine. Remove the water with the turbine. I don't understand. Alright, here we go. It's... I think it's deleting it. It's hard to tell, actually. Okay, I, I, I'm a little scared, but I suspect if we do this, um, it's actually going to be fine. What's the point of removing steam right now? Uh, I just don't want these pipes lying around that were only here to empty it the first time. Uh, what's the melting point of plastic again? 159? Can we get that out of there, please? What even was that plastic? Who's getting scalded? Oh, I missed it. Hey, we got it repaired. Fantastic. Plastic came from the vent. That makes sense. How's that temp? Hot enough to scald again. Well, we haven't been running the aqua tuners. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, let's just fix things up and make sure it's safe to run the vents again. And I think I will have this mopped. Sweep that. I don't want the dupes coming in here randomly later on. Okay. It's taking way longer than it should to get the oil here. Oh, the water's already melting here. Uh, the ice, rather. And it's gone. Oh, I... Hmm. When I said 24 kilos, I meant 24 tons. How much ice do we have lying around? Ten point five. Uh, I think we're better off just pumping water in here. Next time this uh, steam vent does its thing, we'll bring it in this way. Three tiles high of water. I was going to say, can we mop this up, but then I remembered we actually want water here. Dope. Alright. Um, every time I look at the jobs I've queued up, it seems like none of them have been done. Three tile high of water? Uh, yeah, and we're going to flash it to steam. So, like... Uh, I guess that's almost half. We could probably... It'd probably be fine to just have two tiles high. Now that I look at that. Three tiles high will block it from erupting. Oh. Herm. 
term. Yeah, all right. So just two just one tile high, right? Or is it two tiles or three tiles? Like if this tile is blocking it from erupting now, then presumably two tiles high of water would do the same thing. 1,000 kilo of water for tiles is how much steam will be inside that room. Uh, yeah, as, as long as it's like a decent amount of steam and not high enough pressure to stop the water coming out. As long as they get it done before that steam vent starts again. You know, for the amount of time this is taking, I feel like I could have just done a technology airlock. Oh? We're just about there. I think this is enough, actually. That was sudden. Alright, so... Huh? Why is the hydrogen not going... Is this not powered? They still haven't made that one... They're saying it's unreachable, probably because of the checkpoint, even though even though I tested and confirmed a dupe can walk through this. Whatever, let's just remove that tile for a sec. And then someone should be not on the case, apparently. Oh, they can't jump down here, that might be why. Alright. They walked right through there. How can you tell me that's unreachable? Bruh. I guess they don't have something to stand on, that might have been why. Okay, so I forgot to make... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's stop that. I, I, I forgot to empty this. Hmm. I guess we need another mini gas pump for the moment. Is that going to help? Not really. Um, I could just pump everything out and not worry about that little bit of hydrogen that got in. I, th I think I will do that. And why am I doing a mini, mini pump here? Let's go big old pump. And this will be fine, actually. Okay, power. They changed it from 20 kilo. Wasn't sure how much. The P max is 150 kilograms. P max. As in pressure. It's 
so now this mistake is blocking all of this from getting done as well. Although, considering that we have to work harder and harder to pump less and less, this is actually going to last a while. Max pressure before it will stop erupting. Oh, okay. Wondering where he was going with that. Uh, we're supposed to make this a vacuum as well. So let's do that. Wait. You know what? Sure. Just connect those there. Snip that. All right. So once we've got a vacuum here, uh, build that, build that, build that. Get rid of these. Get rid of that. I could probably fit a big pump here, actually. that some time to empty. When are we going to get our water? I should have checked. Uh, ac we haven't analyzed it, really? Bruh. I'm actually a little surprised by that. Although, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. It's a slow, infinite source of water one way or the other. If the volcano is dormant, you can start the analysis on it. I'm not going to do that until we're completely ready. Ooh. Oxalite. Amazing. Oh yeah, I forgot. Apparently we forgot to eat the droplet egg. There we go. It was active just now. Yeah, I saw that. All right, we're already creeping towards emptying this room. This one's really close to empty, it looks like. Micrograms already? Nice. How's our food? 247,000 calories. Seems okay. I'm tired of waiting for them to sweep things. Let's just do that. And that. And that. Now it's telling us that we don't have storage for some things. Which one is it? Um, can we just add some storage here? All 
right, I'm just going to set this to everything. And I'm sure I'll regret it later. Is it still telling us there's nowhere to put some of this stuff? Sweep Aaron's top priority. Yeah, no, I think we do have places for it. Speaking of sweeping, how are we looking up here? Oh, this uh, auto sweeper actually has nothing to do. This one's going to be busy for a while, though. Although the overall speed of the two of them will remain the same. We still haven't swept? Also, where are people getting scalded? Oh, I see. It's like one person at a time through here. Let's just make it prior nine, I guess. Behind the laser, there is a background tile. Behind the laser? What laser? Are we finally ready in here? I'm thinking yes. Alright, so this was negative 20 and negative uh, 6. If I recall correctly. The minor laser. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's not there's supposed to be a gap here. I want uh I want the gas to be able to leak out, but not too fast. Basically we're using waste gas as a medium uh so that the coolant pipes can exchange heat with this room. Uh, that's why we're outputting the gas right next to these three machines that we're trying to keep cool. As opposed to leaving them drenched in oil. This is one option. It's a bit harder to leave this drenched in oil when we first built it on the ceiling. down to milligrams in these two rooms or one room this one's empty fantastic nice Wait, don't do all of that yet, because some of that will be going back into insulated tiles. In fact, we can rebuild those right now. Made vacuum and then unmade it? You're joking. How did I... How did I destroy this tile? Oh, no... Well, I guess we can wait for this little mini gas pump to empty things. Um, but why is it blocked right now? 
because this isn't connected, because we haven't made a vacuum here yet. You have the mod for block the gas? What? When you made the big gas pump. Really? Wait, no, we had this empty. When I deconned the big gas pump, do you mean? Did I somehow deconstruct the tile then? No? No, there wasn't a tile here. This was... Uh, this was... Empty. Never seen a tile there. Yeah, we had three pumps in this room. Two of them were outputting to this. And we had vacuum here. You remove it when you put the bottle emptier. Yeah, I remember that. Davine, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Naga skin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome also. It was open all along, you even complained that the wire isn't building. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing because they couldn't stand on this tile, even though I thought they would stand where the door is. Then the dupe got inside, open the door. Uh, oh, is this not set? Below zero. Alright. The jeeps aren't allowed through and this and until this is a vacuum. Oh, here comes our water. Did we analyze this? Uh what? Is this part of the update? That it tells us how long it's ejecting for? No, we haven't analyzed it yet. What is that yellow bar? That's the analysis bar. Oh, that makes sense. Mojinzo, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The pump is working. The sensor is also connected to the pump. Uh, which pump are we talking about? Oh, this one? It's not going to be working until... Uh, until I make a vacuum here, because I want... Well, I guess I could connect it over here. It would require more pipe. Uh, but I want... It, it's already connected to the filter. I want the filter to put hydrogen here. I guess there's no hydrogen, so we don't have to worry, right? Actually, but there is a bit of hydrogen. <laughs> well, there was a bit of hydrogen. Now we have to pump it out. Uh, also, it's blocked by these two. With the layout that we have. Why there a pump? Can't you just build a ladder up from liquid lock floor? Uh, I guess we could. I found myself needing an airlock here and I thought, well, it takes this much space. Why don't I build one of these? I guess we could have our we could have a little demonstration of two types of airlocks next to each other. Calculated, that's what I meant to do the whole time. What's this guy waiting for? To pick something up. You're gonna be waiting there a while. There will be hydrogen, yes. Uh why is this seriously? How is how hot is it here? How is it 74 degrees in here? What? Is it... What is it? Huh? 
I don't think this airlock will work anyway. Uh, it does work. I've tested it. Is that dupe going to continue standing there forever? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, uh, how about this? Does this work? No. What if I now just tell you to move here? The dupe thing produces heat? Uh, not really, no. 500 d Wow. 500 DTUs? Are you serious? But for a checkpoint... That's a good joke. Why don't we... First of all... Uh, this is why everyone builds these weird cheesy things that make no sense. Especially the more compact version of this that's just like a little upside down triangle with literally a drop of crude oil on either side. Heat isn't going anywhere. Hmm. It's, it's not spreading around the room evenly. I guess there's less and less gas in the room. Yeah, that's a point. So there's less thermal conductivity. Um, you know what? I don't have to build this at all. I can just set this door to never open again. We can just leave that locked. Except... No, that's not right at all. Because we want this to be vacuum and this to be hydrogen. I think someone pointed that out, actually. Yeah, it'll be fine once we get our gas in there. We're down to... 700 micrograms. 3,000 micrograms up this end. As long as the pump doesn't overheat. Liquid locks for the win? Yes, and that's terrible. Wait. Oh, I forgot I ordered that deconstructed. Are we almost there? 400 micrograms in this corner. Let's go. I think it's all hydrogen now, anyway. Oh, it's literally all hydrogen. We can stop. Okay. Alright. Snippy snip. And... Connect... Uh, these... And now it's blocked by this one. How empty is this? It's almost done. I may as well leave it and pay some attention somewhere else. Except I want to see the hydrogen coming in here and manually stop it before it gets super high pressure. The devs have added visco gel. That for me is a pass to liquid lock. Uh, I don't care. Like, to me, a game that, like, one of its defining characteristics is it has gas to deal with, and it has airlocks in them. Uh, the fact that it takes so much, and so many entities, and so many tiles, uh, just to make a basic little mechanical, like, airlock with vacuum in the middle, um, that's, that's sad. That's not... That's not Pog Champ. Uh, 
that is a lot of cuddle pips. Um, what are they making for us? Dirt. I almost don't want to limit their numbers. What even is Visco gel? Uh, it flashes back to Napfa. Solid is Visco gel. Or is it the liquid or the solid that we normally? High surface tension, preventing typical liquid flow, and allowing for unusual configurations. Hmm. All right. Do we have... Can we have vacuum? Can we have a little vacuum as a treat? Our power is stuttering. We still have natural gas. Uh, yeah, we do. Yes and no. The reservoirs are empty, but we've still got lots of it here. Oh, we have, like, a trickle. Uh, I think I'm okay. Hmm. I think I'm okay with this, to be honest. Our trickle of natural gas from up here is... It's actually not that much of a trickle now. I think this just started erupting. But I was going to say, yeah, I really do want to prioritize whatever gas is coming down this pipe as uh, over consuming this reserve right here. Why is this pump not... not working? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna stop waiting on this one. Um, now what? Why are we not... Why are we not pumping? This thing is powered? Uh, hello? I don't understand why gas filter is not doing gas filter things. Signal? Oh, I never put a signal in a gas filter before. Okay. That's a little inconvenient. Uh, let's just delete that one. Indeed. Alright. We're just going to go until we have plenty of pressure for keeping the steam engines cool. And then I'll just manually cut it off. Kevin? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hype fantastic, indeed. Uh, we're all up. Wait, wait, wait. On this end, we're already up to like one kilo per tile. Okay, that's probably pretty good right there. And stop. Fantastic. Uh, let's turn these bridges around. Send our hydrogen back where it belongs. And... We're so close. I think I'll wait for this vacuum. I don't want to let the dupes through here. Just oh, I've got the door airlock. Uh, I've got the door locked. It's fine. 
We're down to the double digits of micrograms. And there's no power or something. Wait, what? Uh, really? We've got vacuum up here. Oh, we got it. Okay. Fantastic. Alright, so now we can... First of all, build this. And then, what? Reconnect this pipe. Get some vacuum here. And we'll be leaving this where it is. Let's put those bridges back in place. Three hundred micrograms in the far corner. Fantastic. Uh, I think I think we're ready to let dupes through here now. Let's double check everything. I I'm not concerned that the checkpoint on the other side is busted just yet. After all, uh, as soon as I enable this again, the first thing that a dupe comes in here for is going to be to repair this. I'm pretty sure. And then after that's done we'll deconstruct the gas pump. Actually let me just set it to deconstruct low priority. An only vacuum sometimes behaves like a gas. It is gas in Oni indeed. When you play around in Sandbox, you can fill the room with vacuum. Interesting. Uh, do we have someone coming? How about this? I want to make absolutely sure the first person who comes in here is repairing the checkpoint. Uh, what do you mean, unreachable? Auto, auto... Oh, right, I forgot these. I was a bit excessive in making sure no one would come through. Wait, what? I told you to repair that. Oh no. Okay, so there's hydrogen in here, therefore not allowed in. They let polluted oxygen... oh my god. Because they stood next to the door. Uh... Oh, and this... This thing needs priority. Sometime when you repair with a lasers... what? The things get destroyed. Uh-huh. Well, we've mostly got hydrogen in here, which is more than sufficient for this to self cool assuming that it's capable of doing that oh and we're giving up cool nice good i uh, i bet i really didn't foresee the checkpoint just sitting idle heating itself up to the point that it broke and now if dupes come in this side, they're probably going to stand here to build the checkpoint. Mm. 
bad dupes. Filthy pea oxygen is gonna bother you? Yeah, it is. It definitely is. I mean, I could always put like a mini gas pump in here, connect it to this until the polluted oxygen is gone. <laughs> do that. Someone's coming. Yep, they're standing in the doorway. Alright, Kevin. You are going to move here. And you are going to wait for the airlock. Which is using a mini pump because it's not like we're going to be coming in and out of here often. Wonder if I can exploit the dupe checkpoint for generate heat and so free power. Uh, is what is it? Ten watts? Ten watts and five hundred DTU's of heat. Who knows? Maybe the math does check out. Yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. So, what is a DTU? Like, uh, how does that work out? Well, I mean, we can compare it a little bit viscerally if we can, if we think of like, uh, sure, wild pips. Let's go. Let's open this. Uh, let's see. The metal refinery produces sixteen k DTU's of heat, so thirty two. You're telling me. 32 checkpoints just sitting there is the same as running a metal refinery all day long. Uh, and it would be 3.2 kilowatts. Uh, it would cost 3.2 kilowatts to get that heat. Morning. I am the sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what else... Are we familiar with that produces heat? Rock crushes the same. Uh, not really worth comparing it to the aqua tuna. A lamp is 500 DTU for 8 watts. Really? Uh, ceiling light is 10 watts. Lamp. Oh, this is a sun lamp. Lamp. Yeah, 500 for 8, although it is bigger. Wait, no, it's not. No, it's it's strictly better for that purpose. I, I would be very amused if... Uh, why is this not working? Because I stopped it. I would be very amused if it turned out there was a power consumer... As that's always on, that just uh, produces more heat that you could turn into energy than actually goes into it as wattage, even after the inefficiencies of converting it. Alright, so we're down to 50 micrograms, finally. Uh, doesn't that mean we're ready to open this up? Alright, I think that is what that means. Is this going to stop working if it's 50% submerged? Maybe I should stop the water flow? We're so close. Lamp-based water boiler? <laughs> because you did not deserve a proper kettle. <laughs> Alright, 
Uh, but I think that is going to do it for today. Uh, little cliffhanger. We're going to get started with our Copper Volcano tomorrow. Let's see who's streaming Oni. Uh, Twitch. Oni. We got Just Jack. I haven't tried. Oh, that's a different language. Let's drop in on Just Jack today. Thanks for hanging out, Morpheus. Take care. Meanwhile, a Tepidizer? What is that? Alright. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue with Oni, and the next few days after that we'll be back to space exploration. See you next time, guys. Hello, T-Hacks! Thank you so much for the raid. Um, I stopped in for a second earlier on your stream. You were working on a copper volcano. How did that go? And also, thank you again for the raid. Um, how, how's your mods? Did you get all your mods working? Man, there's just, just all that clean water is getting into my dirty water. I want, I want my dirty water to stay dirty. Rude. So I, I I showed this before, but I haven't I still haven't got it set up yet because I've been very busy in my real life. What with trying to do the new whole new job thing and all of that. But I plan on doing this for my new raid thing. This is gonna be my raid alert. Don't do that. Gets me every time. Ah, stop. But anyway, thank you for the raid. That's going to be the raid alert coming soon when I find time. Yes, I know the printing pod gives off light and I should have put my research there, but the first thing that I did was... I don't know. You had to be here at the beginning, okay? Don't worry about it. I'm not like that gonna max like well. crazy, but thank you. I appreciate it. When I started the game, I needed to build cots, and that was the only place I could build cots, and which meant I couldn't put my research there. It's fine. There's a lot I don't know about this game, but I've also played this game for like a thousand hours, so there's a lot I do know about the game. <laughs> Good. Oh no, there's polluted dirt in there. Or polluted water in there. Road. <laughs> <laughs> 